expect them to come out and give OG a good match at the very least. Yeah, for sure. I, I think, you know, here on the main stage, I believe we've only had two O's so far, if I'm not mistaken, right? I don't, don't think a single series has gone three games. I think in this series, that is definitely a possibility uh, that we go the distance because uh, between, between these two teams, as you said, I, I think... So first of all, there's been opportunities for gaming gladiators to learn how to adapt to OG during this tournament. But I, I think it's also probably fair to say that neither team has looked their best. Yeah, right? that's true. Uh, OG has had um, a, a very dominant year in a lot of other tournaments, but here they kind of barely scraped by and got into the upper bracket, I believe in fourth place uh, in their group. Uh, and gaming gladiators obviously starting in lowers and getting that win against Fnatic yesterday. Um, I mean that we'll kind of that's what happens when you win every tournament. You they nerf <laughs> your, your heroes. heroes. <laughs> yeah. I mean we've we've been talking about how it, it's it's kind of funny to see how because Amar isn't absolutely trashing, it feels like he's underperforming <laughs> because we're just used to seeing Amar just Fair. completely yeah. take over games and a lot of the heroes that he's been doing it on. Obviously because OG have been winning these tournaments and it's been meta defining, some of his strategies have been nerfed. We've seen the Razor, we've seen the Timber. Uh, get nerfed quite a bit recently, but still, Game and Gladiators banned them both. They just have so much respect for this guy and what he brings to the team that they'd rather play against some of the heavy meta stuff than than Amar's specialty heroes. Speaking of which, he's playing the Slardar this game, so yeah. this is, uh, in my opinion, one of his absolute best. Um, I was looking at the stats last night for a number of heroes played in OG, and he easily has the fewest together with Chu, but he was a stand-in for one tournament. Sure, oh, Garachio um, might be in some trouble here. Getting blocked a bit by the illusions of Taiga. And it looks like he'll be okay, but takes heavy damage here at the beginning of the game. And I'll try to walk away. And something something worth pointing out about the way OG approached this draft as well was, oh, Garachio actually taking a lot of damage here. We'll yeah. get a couple of races in if he wants to, just one though. Um, Opening the face with Naga when you have the absolute last pick of the draft does give you that flexibility option where you can switch it over to support. And what OG essentially accomplished was that they kind of forced Game and Gladiator's hand to at least pick some sort of solution to carry Naga. Mm -hmm. And then when they don't like the matchup enough, they just swap it over to position four with this minus armor strategy they have. They have, I think OG's lineup in itself has incredibly much, I don't know if you want to call it internal synergy, like the way the heroes play off each other. You have so much physical damage with minus armor, alacrity, uh, whereas Gaming Gladiator's strategy is, as the panel pointed out, very much early heavy. Um, I think it's super important for them that the lanes go well. But they are on a lot of comfort. And to me, maybe the unsung hero, everybody's talking about Marcy, right? You know, it's like Marcy, Enigma. I think Tiny is still undervalued in this tournament. I think this hero is incredible right now. Uh, and they will grab that for Boom in this game, and he's one of the very best. Yep, Duraccio is still sitting on a relatively low HP, but no way to really catch up to him right now. Uh, the Ray's way off here from Duraccio. Maybe a little nerves here on the stage. Uh, I mean, one thing we should mention about Gaming Gladiators, they started out the year extremely well. Uh, well. I can't remember the name of that. It was the regional finals or whatever it was called. They did really well. Uh, and then the second major they placed really in it. It feels like since then, they've basically when they qualified for TI, I don't know if they've dropped off or teams have just figured them out a little bit better because they just haven't looked quite the same. Uh, since that point. Yeah, I think this tournament has had plenty of surprises, right? And I think something worth keeping in mind is looking good in groups does not necessarily translate to the main stage, right? We've had examples this year, probably the most glaring one, with EG winning their group and then losing four games back to back on the Too main soon, stage. Too soon, it, it, It's a thing, you know? Like, you can have really good days, you can have bad days. The, the days you want to peak is on the main stage. And I think something that's really good for gaming gladiators in general is that, oh, hang on. Nice cookie. He's going to close the gap here for Yuragi to right click Tofu. Pops that fairy fire, but the Jingu is up, and first blood goes to Yuragi. Gets a little bit of HP back thanks to the boundless strike Jingu combo. Uh, but OG first on the board. And this is a very good lane matchup for Monkey King, one of the most formidable laners against the Underlord. So getting a little bit of a head oh, start. Another down. Curry? No way. <laughs> very good. Oh, he is. He's faster. Fast. Yeah. He'll one get, more oh will do my it. God, that is. I think uh, he didn't get Duraccio's curry the first time, right? It was somebody else's. If I'm not I think it was Celery's. I mean, this is really bad news for Duraccio. That was his salve as well as Wraith Ban. So a lot of laning presence just out the window here for him. Yeah. Still has the two mangoes to work with. So I would say this should be a Shadow Fiend favored lane. Like Slaughter is a melee hero who has no ranged way of farming creeps. So every time you want to go and get a last hit, you're exposing yourself to getting raised comboed. But so far, so good for Amar, right? He's 13. And three against the basically exact same CS scoreline for the Shadow Fiend. Uh, and that is while playing with support Naga, who 
honestly doesn't really offer that much for a Snarkar most of the time, right? It offers courier killing potential, apparently. You can see another cookie oh. setup kill onto Tofu Jingu with the Scatter Blast. And second kill in this lane for Yuragi and OG overall, who, I mean, like you said, even in this, this off lane, uh, Boromar doing quite well to start this game. He's gonna take a raise though. Gets a crush off, but no one in the vicinity. So we'll have to back away as uh, the Tango's slowly bringing him back up to a healthy amount. Uh, I, I gotta say, man, I don't wanna play a Silencer Underlord lane in this game. I, I feel like Silencer's job is so difficult. You need to offer some sort of presence for the Underlord because if you don't, he just gets bullied out of the lane by the Monkey King snap. But if you come even remotely close, you get boundless struck into a cookie and you just die, right? So mm -hmm. it's just really, really difficult. And it, it goes to show how powerful this pick from OG was. I was wondering if Gaming Gladiators were actually going to up to go for some sort of try lane to try to solve this laning problem because they're one of the teams that likes to do that. But the issue is I don't think Underlord enjoys either side lane. Otherwise, we'd be playing against Slardar, which is also not great. So you kind of have to choose the lesser evil here. And unfortunately, both of them for that guy are not the best. Ace is getting great farm, though, got to say. 23 and 7 is... Very impressive against this lane, but it has cost a lot of potential for Tofu's ability to to scale somewhat in this game on the silencer. Right. How important is it for Ace to be kind of active on the under? Like, how fast do you actually get active on this hero with the Fiend's Gate? Uh, I'm, because I, we can, I can look at the OG lineup. You've mentioned the minus armor. They have amazing setup for Sunstrike in various ways. Yep. Like their lineup makes sense, uh, but from gaming, gaming gladiators, it feels like there's some maneuverability here. I think there's some interesting plays with a oh hang on bottom lane. Yeah, a lot of damage. Storm comes out, but that's the stun onto Ace. And Iragi not gonna go any further here. Yeah, I saw the glyph come out there. I think maybe gaming gladiators were expecting Yuragi. Oh the hurricane out. onto Amar, but he gets the crush off and is A okay. Taiga, he's gonna get the ensnare. A little bit extra damage to celery, but Amar not in range to get a stun off. How many courier kills we're gonna have this game? Is that three? Yeah, that was Ace taking out the, the opposing courier here. Finally, Gaming Gladiators get on the board on that account. Indeed. We should have a, a courier death count somewhere. How about Visible at all times. How about a Very courier important. kill cam? That's Fully not... zoomed in. <laughs> that sounds kind of, uh, I don't know, that sounds kind of violent, honestly. Oh, but you don't mind when the heroes is. die, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, 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 but the couriers, oh, let's yeah, but the them at all of a courier time. is just uh, on another level. Have you seen the couriers? A lot of them don't really... Okay, I mean, there's one, there's kind of a... Okay, I take that back. That's a really cute dog with a hot dog in the dire base. All right. <laughs> could be Onion. <laughs> could be, could be anyone. Scatter Blast onto Ace. Your oh, Mars in trouble, though. too. The cookie set up. Boundless Strike, Sun Strike's coming as well, and Ace, one right click away, and Yuragi takes it. On the other side, Amar did fall to Duraccio, and Celery able to get out, so no trade at the top lane, but a trade basically uh, globally for both respective position threes. And Taiga, Duraccio, another raise, but not quite enough to finish the job. Pinecone? The Pinecone is very scary, it's slow. But very slow, as you would expect from an inanimate object. Oh, it's like, still alive. It be able could to it successfully. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if it got to, what, what's it called again? The ability test. You know this. Seed shot. Oh, you actually knew. I mean, that, that one's the dumbest name in the game, probably. I, for, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not something you, not a very called out ability. True. Uh, mid lane is one lane we haven't really talked about too much with BZM on the Invoker sitting on 37 and 11 and then 31 and 12 on the other side for Boom on the Tiny who is now smoked. So we'll see if they can, I mean, with the TP coming into the top lane, we'll see if they can punish this a little bit. Yep. This should be a good rotation. If they kill Amar again, they actually stifle uh, his game run a lot here. Taiga but... instead. They won't be as happy with this potential trait. And Taiga will be the sacrifice for OG, which again, they're going to be relatively happy. Although he did TP there. He was the one that TP'd, so. He did, but it was a, a long walk. It's a much smaller prize to claim. Uh, and in the meantime, Bot lane, Cookie, so much setup for this Sunstrike, and Yuragi still ends up with the kill himself. And he is off to the races, 4-0 and o to start the game. All four kills. And you can see what item build Ace has gone for to try to combat this, right? He's gone phase boots and lace on the Underlord, but even then, the stuns into Sunstrike strike just too much doesn't have too much in the way of tankiness uh, obviously you have a bit of armor but he you know even buys a fluffy hat right he's just really trying to get all the small value items that he can to try to stay alive down here um 
want to point out, by the way, when we see this Invoker pick, I think OG, correct me if I'm wrong, they basically never play Wex, right? As I'm like trying to think to myself about their the rate of going these builds on this hero, and I, even in the patch where everyone was playing Quas Wex Invoker, this guy was the one player who just never, basically never deviated, BZM, mm -hmm. plays an incredible Exhort Invoker, and it, it also goes very much in line with OG's kind of ideology in the patch, right, where they want all three cores to scale. So where other invokers would go Quaswex, Rush Urn, maybe Vessel into Midas, PZM, he goes Brown Boots Midas, Exhort, and he farms. And he joins yeah. fights globally with Sunstrike, and then eventually he carries the game from mid. So um, quite concerning for gaming gladiators, I have to say. It's not like this is a monumental lead by any means to the 1k, but PZM's having a great game, Yuragi's having a great game, and arguably their lineup just scales. So incredibly well with minus armor on Radiant against Roche as well. Um, is Amara going for a Midas as well? Yeah, looks like that is also the case. Yeah, uh, well. That's his catch up mechanic, I suppose, because he's kind of pushed out of lane to a degree. Uh, but we'll see if it ends up being a little. I mean, obviously, I would assume Game and Gladiators, their response would try to maybe push a little faster, group up a little more before that can really truly come online. It's just the most Amara thing ever, right? Like, yeah. both, a lot of other players, it's like, oh, my other two cores are doing really great. <laughs> I'm gonna buy utility items yeah. on my starter, and exactly. they will carry the game. Amara is like, you guys are, oh, well, BZM, you are level 30 on Invoker, so that's okay, but Yuragi, you're only gold tier Monkey King. I don't trust you. I will. Get the farm. Oh, the nice Rachio. side step. Yeah, but he's going to take a full Wukong's command, trying to walk on the outskirts with the Boundless Strike into the Sun Strike again. Not even needed. Enough damage again for OG. And you talked about, I mean, again, not to harp on this more and more, but uh, the Exord Invoker, it's, I feel like it works every time. Every hero on your lineup has a stunner root. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's in the lane, you have a setup. It feels like we might later on in the tournament, if it goes well for OG, uh, or even later in this series as well, we might see the Invoker Nyx combo, right? This is a classic. Uh, Nyx has been very popular this tournament. We saw Secret the other day win two games with Nyx Dawnbreaker, uh, which also was that very nice global presence. You would get the stuns into the into the Dawn ult. Uh, Invoker Sunstrike, similar logic. Um, and we know for a fact that Taiga likes Nyx, and he plays a really good one, so it could definitely be something OG could look for. And there are later games. OG. Prowse here in the top lane. And of course, Gaming Gladiators outfield will take the tier one tower. BZM is getting so much done mid. I mean, Duracho finally now will take out this siege creep, but mid tower down to 200 health. OG taking top tower, so effectively more or less grabbing two tier ones at the 11 minute mark at the same time against an inch lineup. That feels so good, as a wise man once said. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even get that at first. I did, I, it wasn't on purpose. Then when I said it, I was like, oh no, here we go again. No. Uh, well, Boom is 1,500 into his Blink Dagger, and I think that is going to be the crucial point for Gaming Gladiators. They have to get stuff done with that, especially with the two Midases, uh, which Amar... Oh, but his might get delayed here, Yuragi. Well, we have the initiation on at the Tiny now. But global. the global silence to force OG Radiant's back. Bottom tower has fallen. And of course, the TP as well from Gaiman. And it looks like there's not going to be any casualties here. Yeah, there's almost perfect overlap between the cooldowns of these two spells. So Snapfire's ulti is 120 and Silencer's global silence is 130. So effectively, if you trade them off, you need to make a perfectly timed move with your next Snapfire ult to not have the, the silence available again. Um, Seems like it was a big part of why Gaiman did pick this hero in this game. Derangio, Requiem, there it is. Do they have the raise? Yep, and Ace is here as well. Huge big kill. kill for Gaiman Gladiators off of the Invis rune from Derangio. But it's going to get punished to a degree. Ace will fall. Nothing comes for free. Bounce. For the first time in the game, now a minor gold lead for Gaiman Gladiators, which you know, usually you would look at this with the perspective of, all right, that's good, let's keep it up. But we know this team, we know how they play. A lot of the games that they win, or at least this year that they've won with a lineup like this right now, the gold lead would be 2K, 3K. Um, and you are playing against a lineup that's running multiple Midas's, so you do need to keep that pressure going so that they don't just naturally find more gold on the map that you can't because it doesn't exist. Right. So. Well, Boom. Boom has his blink dagger. Yeah. See how fast they want to 
expose it, if you will. I'd love to see, if possible, for gaming gladiators to, once they have global silence, up, try to make a smoke rotation with this tiny dagger, kill the invoker mid, and look to pressure that tower with any strong enchantress creep. It's a lot of things to have happen at once when you've already lost your top and mid tower, but I think you kind of need to get creative and start making invasive moves uh, around the mid area, because otherwise OG are controlling what we used to call the triangle area. I don't know if we really should anymore because there's no third camp, but everybody knows it as that. Um, but OG really want that area all the time because they are playing this greedy style with their Midas and just Amaris also going and farming Ancients a lot of the time. So opening up the mid tower would give them more avenues to... If you want to extend it a bit, and just the secret shop icon is the triangle. That's the true. Point. That's actually true on both sides. I like that. Thank you, Cinderin. You're very smart. Thank you, Cinder. Once in a blue moon. Well, the smoke gank didn't end up resulting in a kill, at least not yet, although Yoragi is hunting. Celery inside the tree line here. There's the vision. Celery is mega dead. But again, just the support for Gaiman. Uh, don't know if the blink dagger. Uh, what are they waiting for something specific? Are they waiting for the global silence to come back uh, for Boom to reveal this blink dagger officially? I'm not sure. I mean, it's possible that they were looking for a move. They didn't find the angle, and then OG were first to pounce, and they were like, "All right, you know the heroes that we were trying to gank, we didn't find the catch. We're just back to farming." Like you got to be efficient about it, right? If your move fails, make sure you get something done. Um, but yeah, that was that was very unsuccessful here from Gaiman. Uh, fortunately for them, they only lost Celery, of course. Rather unusual in a monkey diet, uh, Celery, but he was hungry enough that um, yeah. he opted for that. Probably not. I can tell you from experience that if you you have to be really hungry to eat Celery, so <laughs> he must have been starving after that death. Well said. Agreed. Vegetables. Nothing wrong with vegetables. Yes, yeah, vegetables. Just Celery. Uh, Duraccio, what is he working on right now? He has the Mask of Madness and the Dragon Lance. Yep. See him farming the Ancients and is an Ogre Club into the BKB. So things have kind of slowed down, which we talked about against the Midas is maybe not uh, the best of moves, but we'll see how it works out for Gaiman. Uh, Echo Saber there for Uragi as he's working towards his BKB as well. And obviously, from a Mars perspective, the Midas has been online for a decent amount of time, which I now he finishes treads. We will instead enter some strike into all my spells into Artyom coming or in Waker. I have Arts. We will ensnare into some strike into all my spells and Artyom coming. Or oh, quickly back to live as uh, Ace is dead. So we didn't get to see that, that gank in its full so juicy perspective, time, Cinderin, but so they, they did call what they were going to do and they were successful. Yeah, spoiler, it was a sun strike kill. Well, <laughs> Invoker didn't get the last hit, but he was true involved, as usual. Uh, I was about to say before we saw this, I mean, it still rings true, right? I think the most impressive thing about Gaming Gliders this game is how much farm Ace has. He has 141 CS, it's topping the charts, and that was after laning against Monkey King Snapfire. Uh, Ace does a really good job in general for this team at finding a lot of farm, I think. You know, when I think that was part of the reason that Gaming Gliders were doing so well earlier in the year was when they were running these tri lanes with Duraccio, they still, when they put Ace in the safe lane, he managed to just find a lot of last hits on, on the map in the jungle, just be very effective, even with a bad start. And that's exactly the case here as well. He's one and four, but his CS is very impressive. Boom. Oh, boom goes in, gets the Avatos, but it's on a support nog. I guess Hurricane, but there's the song. Taking some damage from the Arcane Curse. He's just going to TP out in the midst of the song as a tier one tower will drop in favor of Gaiman. It's still, this is what Gaiman needed, right? They need to open that mid tower. So they do finally make this move and are successful with it. Uh, I like the I like the choice they are holding the global. They could have killed the Naga if they wanted to, but they think the global silence is too important oh. in order for them to go for their next objective, which is okay. right here. And this goes very very fast, actually. OG, yeah, they have to be careful. The Mortimer kisses are online. If OG have an idea this is happening, the Sun Strike is going to reveal a little bit. They're Avatos back into the pit. Amar just dead, just like that. As the Mortimer's kiss is coming out into Duraccio, but the global silence counter that the panel talked about, and this is looking like a potential free Roche for Gaiman now. Yeah, OG just giving it up. Here. They're not interested. They All don't right. have their Slarvar. They can't get in there. Yep, and the zoning Requiem as Boom secures the Aegis for himself. Interesting they didn't give it to the Shadow Fiend. I really thought you were going to put that one on Duraccio. I feel like this hero is often very vulnerable and takes a lot of, gets a lot of value out of having the Aegis because you don't have to pop BKB in your first life when you get jump. Yeah. Picking all. Yeah, Boundless Strike into the Wukong. Oh, Sunstrike's coming, but he is okay. Dyer's bottom so he's trying to bait some TPs potentially, but nothing actually came. That's a 15 armor, so 
Wraith Pact wasn't cooled on. Oh, he's actually going for the wave. Are you, is Shuraki going to try him again here? No, not quite. But yeah, I, I love that move from uh, from Gaming Gladiators. Really good stuff. They Not only do they get the Aegis, but keep in mind, this Radiant lineup is incredibly good at killing Roche. So the fact that you take it away from them is almost as valuable as getting it yourself. Oh, oh, Russia boy, would have loved to right. have it now. Yeah, the Aegis could have been on him, but instead he's, I mean, would have died twice in this scenario, I would assume. Although, you can see Gaiman starting to pincer in a bit. The Avatos onto three. Misha very low. Nice. Firestorm from Ace as Yuragi kind of separated from his team, attempting to TP out, and he will be able to TP successfully, just barely out. The Aegis was consumed. Yeah, that's pretty oh, good for OG. You're happy absolutely. with that. You find the Shadow Fiend and you get the Aegis on the follow-up fight. All you lost was your position five. That's great. Very, very good TP there out from Yuragi, obviously counting the stuns, knowing there's nothing left. Uh, the only cancels that they have are Requiem, which was dead, and then Underlord Root, as well as the tiny combo that was used immediately in the beginning, so... Good call there. And OG with the 1k lead at the moment. Uh, but it does... I, I don't... Again. I know that OG are kind of the favorites going into this series, but with these Midas pickups, I feel like the fact that it slowed down a decent amount, they've kind of nullified the Roche that Gaiman was able to claim for themselves. It feels like it's OG's momentum right now to a degree, despite that Roche. This, this aggressive move from OG Rock. could actually fail horribly. They don't know that they're oh, visible under Avalanche. the ward. And the toss, Requiem to follow. Yoragi is mega dead, and here comes Ace with the Fiend's Gate. Misha's gonna be the second kill, so nice pickups for Gaiman. What a sick ward. Like, I t I totally understand OG don't expect there to be vision there minute 19 around their own uh, own triangle there, but that paid massive dividends. That's a huge kill on the Monkey King. They get a little bit of a bonus there. And obviously what OG were hoping for here was for the Shadow Fiend to go and farm the Ancients so that they could get that kill with Monkey Snap plus the Sunstrike. But Gaming Gladiator is one step ahead. They knew it was coming, and they set the trap. And that's going to result in a BKB now picked up on Duracho, and he's immediately eyeing up that Aghanim Shard. It feels like it's different how people progress from this point on SF. We've seen some people get the Shard, we've seen some people go straight Butterfly, uh, we've seen people go Daedalus in this slot as well, Scotty, there's plenty of options for what you can do on SF. I think the Shard is nice though, um, for how the game is going right now. You, you want the extra, I mean, even just the extra a little bit of fear is actually very helpful. Why are you laughing? Isn't that the best part of that? <laughs> so good. I mean, it's, it's half a second, right? But yeah, no, I don't. He gets initiated on by Amar, who pops his newly picked up BKB, continuing to bash away as the Wraith Pact is placed. The Global Silence is not really going to dissuade OG from continuing any further. And Taiga, he's going to get the backup of the rest of his team now. And now the focus is entirely on Ace, and the Mortar Miss Kisses are going to be enough. Double kill for BZM off the back foot of this. Three dead for Gaiman as they are punished severely yeah, for entering OG's jungle. And Global Silence there was expended, uh, which means Misha could finally get to play a big part of his hero, which is always fun when you get to use your ultimate ability. Right, I have a mechanics question for you. Yes? Uh, for the Shadow Fiend, he has Specialist Array. How does that work if you get Shard and you're critting? I'm pretty sure it only works in your main attack. Okay. I think it follows the same rules. I believe when this item came out, it actually synergized with Psy Blades, but I think that got changed pretty quickly because you were Psy Blading on all three projectiles, and that was kind of insane, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I, I don't think any of the secondary attacks carry anything uh, at all. No attack modifiers, no crits. Gotcha. You're right. I mean, it's still nice on SF because you can hit really hard and you like his stats, so it is a, a good neutral item on him. I wonder if SFs, if they could choose if they would prefer this over Grove, though. I don't think they would. I think the SFs would rather have that still. The attack range and the magic magic damage increase is super nice on this hero. As he's actually opting not to go for the shard this time, so it will be a Daedalus. Uh, as oh, he did change. Did he change his mind? He has the shard, right? It's coming out. No, oh, it's not. It? He went Crystalis, you're right. So he did change his mind. Yeah. I heard you laughing at the half second fear. It's like, okay. You were the one laughing. I like that. That's the reason I think it's good. Last year we were actually dumping on this shard. It, it, and then they added the fear, and I think that improve. makes a big difference. It is definitely better now. So we have a smoke now from OG as they enter the triangle of gaming gladiators. Dive. They're not going to find still it. there, but this time around, obviously oh. not visible. It's actually going to pop here, but they don't know that Boom is in the trees. So it looks like nothing will come of this other than potential wards here. 
Well, now they're heading towards the bottom lane. That game just showed. I think they showed attack. on this Naga Illusion. At least one of their heroes did. They see Ace. TP out. Ace might be the only one caught out, but the TPs are coming to the tier two. It's caught inside the ice wall. And it's going to force some BKBs out of BZM, so not too bad from Gaiman. Yeah, there was no backup nearby, and Amar still doesn't have the dagger, so... It's a nice setup from BZM, landed the spells pretty much perfectly, Tornado EMP and Ice Wall and, and into the snap, but they didn't have any follow-up, and Ace is just way too tanky for him to deal with on his own. Is the 4k lead mostly Midas-related, you say? How much... I, I don't even know how to uh, equate that at this point. It's hard to say. I don't, I don't think it's mostly Midas. It's obviously starting to matter, uh, but you also do have a 404 Invoker with 225 CS, right? So BZM is having a, an outstanding game here. I think that's, you know, that's a really large part of the net worth difference. It's actually his difference to, down to the Shadow Fiend, who is playing a different role, Dyer's is the net worth And yeah, speaking of the Invoker, relatively quiet game from Boom. I feel like... When this guy plays tiny, he has a tendency of really taking over games and popping off on these tinies, Ember yep. Spirits, you know, the spirits that are very kill-hungry are his best. Burn! Hasn't really found many opportunities. Yeah, though. it felt like when he picked up the Blink Dagger, there was like a six-minute period where they were just farming still. They yeah, they, really... they finally found those two kills in their own triangle, right? That yeah, he that was involved was... in. If he didn't find those, he would have had three total kills to his name in at 25 on tiny. That was very low for sure. And it feels like, so in this game state, I, I think OG are so comfortable, which is the biggest concern really for gaming gladiators is that it's got to be in the back of your mind that OG want this. Yeah, they want the game to stall exactly. out and nothing to happen. They will smoke themselves now with a with a better Radiant map positioning perhaps, but like they, they don't have to make a lot of moves if as long as the lanes are in the right position, they feel very comfortable with just scaling up. Yep, accelerate, tanking the gank, deleted. Or Alacrity and uh, yeah, pretty much any hero would die there, so Gaiman would be happy that it is Celery. Yeah, with Alacrity, Treads, and Midas, you might almost have regular tech speed against Enchantress. Very good. Yeah, maybe that's uh, part of the, the reason for going it. He has the damage from his buddy in the mid lane. I think you're going to see most Alacrity's probably going the Monkey King, right? But I mean, but that's another nice thing about their lineup. Both heroes have the guaranteed procs from getting multiple attacks in there, yeah. and you combo that with an attack speed hero. Uh, very nice synergy again. Okay. Yep, next Roche, uh, 35 seconds away, and I think that's going to a game and have to get that one again. They Obviously, do. the first time they got it, like you said, it was kind of taking it away from OG more than anything, but felt like they didn't really use it in any like meaningful way. That's BZM. Not going to get gone on here by Boom, who Duracho. is working on the Aghanim Scepter. This is actually a really good timing for Duracho, so we're only 10 away from Big Bad Stone Man. And they do have a DD on SF. Good vision here from OG, oh, though. Mortimer's Kisses going to reveal Celery here. Sticking heavy damage. Has the heal going, though. You can tell Amar. Oh, the blink is canceled thanks to the Arcane Curse. And Yuragi now resetting. A little bit of an awkward uh, mini engagement here between the two teams as they know that Roche could be up. Once and again, great play from Tofu to not global there. It's it's very important that you have the right read. I think Misha was maybe hoping to bait it out because if he forces the global there, OG are very strong to contest Roche. But with that still in their arsenal, they have ways of solving the BKB Invoker going in, the BKB Monkey King. It's a really big part of OG's team fight that Monkey gets his ult off. And if they see him at any point and he has to pop BKB defensively before he ults, they just global him out when he starts channeling the ult. And it gives them a lot more space and time in the fight uh, for SF and, and the Tiny to deliver. Yeah. You're gonna see this is a really, really important moment. OG had the vision in the pit there. The Naga Illusion as well as a Forge Spirit. Roche are pushing out mid lane with raises. Yep, as Roche is already approaching the half HP mark. Let's see if Gaiman can try to contest this because this could be a turning point for them in this game, no doubt about it. They're going to run right into Misha. As Roche is abandoned temporarily, but Ace is caught out. Yuragi gets off his ultimate, but he's taking heavy damage. Has to pop the BKB, and now everybody tries to reset as the global silence comes in. Kind of resets his fight to a degree as Boom gets the Avatos on Demisha. It's going to be close on this kill. Finally finds it. That's just the first death in this engagement. As you can see, Amar going to town on the BKB SF through the song. And he's going to find that kill relatively easily, but he's going to be traded as a double kill for Celery of all heroes. And it turns into a three for two. BZM has to ghost walk away. Yuragi's still 
fine and healthy. As the rest of Gaiman might have to reset a bit as two cores have died. And really the trade is for two oh. supports is BZM. Nets the double kill thanks to that Sunstrike. And with that, Gaiman have to abandon this for the time being. You can see that Roche still pretty healthy. So it's not going to be an instant take for either team. I wonder this fight that we just had break out there where Ace got effectively forced down to 20% before he got out of the monkey king ult. I wonder what that fight would have looked like if they globaled the monkey ult. So we see it here, right? Yuragi jumps in and ch channels the ult there. If you global, he's just going to pop BKB and ult again, right? So I guess, I guess there was just no way out of this. But it is a, a really important thing for OG in this fight that Ace is that low. If Underlord has a little bit more presence, he can offer more protection here uh, for the Shadow Fiend by playing more aggressively in the fight. But he had to back off, and that gave Amar the angle to just go in straight away and just isolate Duracha out of the fight. And Shadow Fiend is that big damage dealer for Gaiman. Oh, we're back to live here. Yep. We have mass TPs onto the outpost as the nice Mortimer's Kiss is coming, but not that much damage applied. As we can see, inside the pit, Roche still pretty healthy, but OG gonna try to start taking it now. Ace gets the Firestorm off, and here comes the tree volley from Boom, but not a whole lot of damage applied, mostly to Roche himself, as it looks like. Silence is gonna get initiated, but Tofu gets the four step off just in time as BZM has to re-engage, has to reset completely as BZM is taking huge physical damage from Duraccio. And both teams neither have found a kill in this engagement, but Gaiman feeling pretty nice to go inside this pit, at least at the moment. Man, such a tense moment here, knowing that this could be deciding the game potentially in the second Roche. Yeah, Duracho could get the shard Radiant for free. Bottom tower <laughs> is under attack. Very important. Imagine that. Yeah, they're starting to poke Roche a bit. There is Song of the Siren. This is not safe. Yeah. No Mortimer's Kisses at the moment, though. Here comes the Tornado. It's going to clip Duracho, and of course they have the spam of the illusions to give the vision here as Roche just continually taking these tickles time and time again. Smoke out from OG. Requiem trying to buy some time to be able to take the second Roche, and they get it. Duracho with the Aegis and the Shard. Did he just last well, on the They actually want to try to fight this. Is OG able to get the beautiful Meteor onto several heroes, but Tofu and company able to maneuver onto the other side of the pit. They haven't lost anybody here. Who did they get the Roche kill? No. Oh, you're right. Duraccio snatched the Aegis, so... I think BZM Sunstruck the Roche. Either that or an illusion from Naga, potentially. I think it was Sunstrike. Wow. That's I mean, either way, the Aegis and Shard are far more important at this stage. Than Absolutely. The and get. they get the buyback on the Snap, which is probably the least important out of all those four right, things. All right, Requiem. Yeah, Sunstrike. You're right. <laughs> oh, my God. What are the chances? 50%. That's well okay. Well, thanks. Quick robot math there. Yeah. 62.5% accuracy on the Sun Strikes, not, not too shabby. I mean, every hero has a stun, basically. <laughs> like, a little easier. Yeah, so depending on your perspective, maybe that's bad. <laughs> maybe that's horrible, <laughs> yeah. Wow, you've missed six in this game? Uh, did Duraccio eat the shard himself? Yeah, I think so. so. Do you eat it? Of course, consume. That's the same as eating in my book. Uh, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll take that. Okay. So Duraccio with the Aegis for another four minutes. This is actually a really strong time for Gaming Gladiators in one minute. Uh, Duraccio is going to pick up the Daedalus at that point with that fresh free shard and the Aegis. I think Gaming Gladiators are finally going to start looking at some tier two towers and yeah. taking more control of the map. Maybe they will even do it before the Daedalus, but it just feels awkward to do it right now. You're 300 gold away, but maybe OG aren't interested in defending bottom anyway, in which case, you know, power to you. You can. One of the luxuries of having this Underlord is that you can send him top lane and he can connect with your team bottom with Fiendscape, kind of Dawnbreaker-esque yeah. gameplay that this hero can pull off. Uh, so they're not even too worried about ending up trading towers, but they should be worried about Ace's life potentially, trying to fade out a BKB here. Now he doesn't have the mana for it. Yeah, he's TPs gonna are coming, kill. but he's done. Amar. The TPs matter not. Wukong's command used from Yuragi. I guess that's going to be used to ward off the rest of Gaiman that were potentially coming, and they'll take the tier two. It's a celebratory arena for the tower. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, that's not where he wanted to get forced by Celery, I think, but it's okay. Right. I mean, OG have done a pretty damn good job of... I mean, they've been giving up the, the Aegises, but it feels like they're the ones with the Aegises in a lot of ways. This game and haven't really been able to capitalize they are. either time. They have two of them. Shut up. Okay. Oh, the Salt Cure is now on Amar. And the physical damage continues to be ridiculous from the side of OG. 
But it feels like both times that Gaiman have had the Aegis, they've, the lead has grown a bit for OG in some yeah. way. Well, now we can start talking Midas, because now it's been quite a while, right? Yeah. Both Invoker and Slardar, I would guess, have used it about 10 times each, perhaps. So that will obviously start really mattering and racking up. And Amar, as a result, also with the extra experience, has now reached level 20. So that's the minus four Corrosive Haze Armor talent. Now down to minus 24 total on that spell. Do you ever buy a shard on this hero at this point? Like... It feels like it's a pretty, pretty good. valuable purchase, right? Yeah. Especially considering what heroes you're playing with. A lot of the time, Slaughter wants to get it for free from the Roche, but Amar is prioritizing, for the time being at least, going for a Nullifier to prevent the four Staffs, which is honestly the main thing keeping him from just flat-out killing heroes on his own, right? Is that they, they are pushing them away with the Eng four Staff with the Shadow Fiend Pike. Once, and a uh, 4-step on Silencer too, right? They have three of them. So that Nullifier will be very valuable. Well, Gaiman with the Aegis, grouping up top lane. They get the Tier 1, looking for the Tier 2 next. But it's going to be a trade again as OG. Yep. Despite not having the the Roche goodies, are A-OK -okay with this, uh, this trade All right, it's, for, it's Force in time. Indeed. Here we go. Uh, less than a minute left on the Aegis. So see how OG want to... Try to approach this. Do okay. they have Rocky. any offensive oh, force stuff? Balance strike! And look at the damage! The Aegis is just gone like that. Now the Wukong's command into the meteor, and Duraccio dies a second time in the blink of an eye. Ace has to BKB Fiend's Gate away, and the rest of Gaiman have to ditch. Celery doesn't have that opportunity, and it looks like Tofu's TP gets canceled as well. So three dead as OG. Just on another level here, now with a 12k lead. Yeah, I, I was looking if there was a potential offensive four step play there onto the Shadow Fiend because he was just standing there hitting the tower. They don't have any four steps, they don't need them. They literally just kill him instantly. Obviously, Gaming Gladiator, uh, they, they have one save, which is Global Sounds, but doesn't really work for situations like that. Like, you're gonna jump the SF, they pop Global, I think he still dies. And on the second life, they have literally no chance of saving. He's getting perma-bashed by the Slardar when he comes back up. So that kill was instant. Yeah. You're going to see now they drop the Monkey King ult, and I think Amar turns back on him as well. Like Instant the, bash. The, he didn't the, play. The fact that he went, literally had the, the, the presence of mind to go outside the Wukongs to hit a couple random enemies to get the bashes up again, yeah. to be able to get the literal perma-bash is insane. Yep. Man. Clean. So hard to play against that. That's true. volley coming in. Uh, boom. Oh, he's okay. doing some damage because the Avatar's back into the pit. And they're going to get some form of revenge onto Amar. But they're going to need a lot more of that to get back in this game. Ay, 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 ay. Well, they could at least claim a mid tier too. I don't think Amar is interested in buying back for that unless OG do get a very clean setup once again. But maybe they're going to just try to defend it the aggressive way. They're uh, pushing oh, top oh, and they... initiated on. The Sheep Stick is there. And he is deleted. Is under they can actually force them back here. They can defend their tier two tower mid by pushing top. The OG have, or Game of Gladiators have to come back here. They're Absolutely. sending back the Underlord for now. Tower. Forge that Spirits won't be able to finish it off. Although, boom, he's going to get ensnared. And you can see Gaiman have already teeped a couple heroes. So they don't have that many in numbers. Boundless Strike connects as well. Duraccio has to wreck him to try to zone away the rest of OG. But there's the Sheep Stick and the Meteor with the Mortimer's Kiss. There's so much fire destroying the Stone Man. As BZM able to get his BKB off. But you can see the song being used. And now they're just going to focus down the BKB targets for the time being. So two dead in favor of OG. With the Wukong's command, boundless strike onto two, and Gaiman are getting destroyed. Oh, so clean. What an insane fight from OG. Everything landing perfectly. Man. Great spell casting series. The way they set up that kill on Tiny and take advantage of him not having BKB is just so clean, right? And snare into the scatter blast damage so he can blink into the follow up from the Monkey King. Just so, so clean. What, what's the worst that could happen? And everything, everything from Invoker. <laughs> That's a good line for that moment. Yeah. Some positivity here is uh, you know, OG now going to the high ground. And obviously we can see there are a couple buybacks, but they're not going to be that impactful right now. As the fortification is popped and this is looking like minimum two lanes, if not more. And again, when Shadowfiend's back, he's going to have half the soul, so 
won't be as powerful as he could be. Scotty now picked up by Yuragi. That's two lanes. Now trying to go for the Megas. Boom. He's going to get initiated on mid-tree volley. And look how fast he dies again. Scatterblast finishes him off. He does have buyback this time, though. But at this point, it's going to be Mega Creeps. As Gaiman, they're just getting zoned out by BZM, who has a delicious meatball surprise with a refresher. And the global the is there. can't play. Like, he's literally yeah. just he not He just dies on the outskirts, as the rest of Gaiman are stuck in their freaking fountain right now. Good lord. OG, I think it's just a range racks in the top to be able to get those Mega Creeps as Yuragi pops the BKB. Boom, with a pretty good tree volley, but it's not enough damage at this stage of the game. As they're gonna be able to finish off, and that's a dieback for Mr. Boom himself. And it looks like game one as GG's come out, go to OG in an extremely convincing fashion. And I know we came in thinking OG would be the favorites coming in, and they're showing why here. They're able to play greedy with double Midas. And it worked out. <laughs> it did. Uh, Gaming Gladiators went for one of their, you know, tried, tried and tested and true strategies, but they didn't get the lead that they needed. They're they're very used to when playing these kind of uh, of tactics to get that early advantage and snowball with it. And OG managed to weather the storm in their lanes, keep it close, get the Midases, get the farm up, and honestly, just a standout performance for for me in this game by BZM on the Invoker. Not really too surprising, I guess you could say, from an Exhort Invoker with a good laning stage, but... Thank you very much, Sir Action Slacks. Another very, very good interview. Hopefully an Emmy Award-winning interview. Just that specific one will go I, down I love, I love the confidence. When you can just tell the coach, like, I guess, you just know it's in the bag, you know? Yeah, I, that's true. I'm so inspired. You know, I think coaches saying, I guess, have a higher win rate than coaches saying we are definitely winning this game, at least at this event so far. I would love confident. to see the statistics on that. Yeah. Uh, one it, word answers, if that equates to more wins, or if they're eloquent, perhaps they lose more. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. But kind of like me, like, I talk a lot, but not so much play, you know? So uh, yeah. it, it, it makes sense. It really does make sense. You know what else makes sense? That this is game two, because game one is over. Not sure if you're aware of that, Cinderin, but That's true. game two of this lower bracket matchup between Gaming Gladiators and OG. OG with a 1-0 advantage so far. And they're looking to close this series out while Gaiman trying to hold on to their TI hopes uh, and try and force a game number three. We're finally going to see some primal beast action. But the panel kind of talked about a lot of bad matchups for yeah. my boy. Talk to me about it. Yeah, so Clockwork is already a little bit of a, a tricky one to deal with because you, you're a mobility-based hero, right? As Primal Beast, you really need to move around and navigate the fight. And you have an ability that gives you a lot of armor, but in the way, like Clockwork is 90% magic damage. He has a lot of ways of interrupting your movement with cogs, with hookshot, battery assault is annoying. And you have Pango ult, that's going to be annoying for you. Um, you have Ice Path that you need to navigate around, Viper Strike, and then the final last pick that OG get, which kind of reminds me a little bit of what they did in game number one. They picked this Faceless Void, so if the Primal is going off lane, he's going to be playing against Void, which is one of Primal's worst lane matchups. You can just time walk away from the Trample. And if he's going mid, he's going against Pango, who can just swashbuckle away from the Trample. So yeah. they, they kind of cover their bases here, where they see Game of Gladiators going for a top tier pick, and they just make sure there's nowhere he's going to be truly happy to play. Uh, so it's, very, it's a very disruptive way of thinking about drafting that not only do their heroes make a lot of sense together, but there's one singular hero in the enemy team that you're really just trying to make miserable, and that's going to be Ace. So, curious to see how he performs in this game. I think it's a very, very difficult primal game. Yeah. Uh, what about the other heroes, though? We have Lifestealer with the Infest Bomb potential into the Storm Spirit, which yep. was the last pick from Gaiman. The Storm pick was very good, for sure. Let's so see if they can execute properly in the mid game. Try to get some pickoffs here onto OG. Uh, how many uh, how many Midas's can see this game from OG? Uh, I don't think BZM usually buys Midas on Pango, so yeah. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say zero. Zero. It, uh, it's the Void. Viper Midas. Uh, maybe Uragi will buy one, wouldn't he? Yeah, let me face this boy. Buys it from time to time, right? So. And Amar buys one every game, so I think it could be two still. Yeah, I mean it's possible. Ah. It definitely could be. And on the side of gaming gliders. Yeah, Lifestealer, probably the only one who would ever buy it, really. If you buy Primal Beast Midas, you're 
playing the hero wrong. I'll go out and say that maybe, right maybe now. Maybe he that's... needs it real bad this game because yeah. of the bad matchups. I think that's uh, that's not a that's not a good look. I mean, what what kind of itemization can you go for for Primal Beast to try to mitigate like the counters that you're going up? Against? I mean, you obviously have to get BKB, right? Oh, that's ev a... that's every game. Yeah, no, but no. you have to get it even more this game. You have to get two BKBs this game. Right? Oh, so it refresher. refresher. <laughs> okay. But you don't have mana for that, so you need some sort of item to give you mana. So you're gonna hope that you find. All right, give me the full list of items that will allow him to have double BKB. Uh, is he getting the robe or not? Let's just say everything goes his way. Okay, uh, BKB, phase boots, robe, refresher, and then is wand enough? I don't actually know. It's probably close. I don't know. His mana pool is atrocious. Uh, as Taiga taking pretty heavy damage in the bot lane here. Duraccio pops the rage, take off those poison attacks. I, I mean, how could also go BKB, refresher, and six mangoes. Okay, sure, that sounds a little uh, less than ideal. He has three of them already. He's halfway there. So he just needs to not use them. He almost has his first major item, six mangoes. Maybe if he could get the mango tree, then it would be possible. Oh. Right, then you don't know, have to buy yeah. it. Missed that so much, Misha. Onslaught with the trample, lots of damage. I mean, you talked about how Yoragi can deal with this, but what about Jakiro? Yeah, Jakiro is not particularly good against Primal in lane, uh, so... Misha definitely has to be careful about positioning. One of the upsides to Jakiro over certain other supports is it has pretty high base HP, so getting the full kill is difficult, but you put a lot of pressure and you do economic damage. Uh, Jakiro's probably going to have to buy salves here if uh, it keeps getting pressured. Um, but yeah, it, it could be better, it could be worse. There are certain other supports that absolutely get bodied by Primal, and Jakiro is not really in that category, but it's also not the greatest. Uh, I'm not we are many minutes away from this happening, so I don't know why I'm bringing it up now. To your but, five neutral items? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, for oh, once, you're incorrect. I, uh, I can't believe it. Well, I, I'm bringing this up because I know you're such a big fan of Clockwork, but I am. seeing the Aghanim Scepter at this tournament, it hasn't been picked up as much because it's a lot of his support and you have to get the gold, but when it's picked up, it feels impossible to play against a lot of the time. Yeah, I think the biggest upside to it is just the vision, right? If you're playing support clock and you just spam out the rockets yeah. uh, in key moments, you get a lot of information, which is very powerful. Um, I do think in this game, Taiga is more likely to go for step though. I just think it's too good to not buy. You're playing against Lifestealer, you're playing against Primal Beast. Oh, Taiga, by the way, taking some hefty damage down here. We'll be fine, though. Yeah, it has to be careful with that Ghoul Frenzy, of course, level one. Yeah, very important spell for Lifestealer. For I mean, game. unless they see incredible value in getting the multiple rockets, I think the best clockwork build in this game is probably for Steph Lotus. Get the Lotus against the Global Silence for any teammate of your choosing so you can save them. Uh, it's a great way of countering Storm Spirit because he can't really Vortex unless he BKBs. Um, and the Force Staff, just amazing, right? Primal, Life Stealer, even Storm. If the hero at least turns around before they get pulled by Vortex, you can reset their position pr pretty well. Fire, I'm gonna trade it again. It'd be very annoying as Duraccio has to pop the old Rage and just walk out. Uh, I mean, from BZM's perspective on the Tango, when you're going up against the likes of, like you said, the Global Radiant Silence, which can be really annoying. What's the Ziragi? Oh, the Trample. He has, he has time, time walk though. Uh, but what, what kind of itemization for BZM? Are you are you having to go BKB at some point? We used to see Lotus Orbs back in the day, but that hasn't really been as much of a thing for the mid Pango. Or you're relying on your team to get the I kind of like Diffusal here still, right? It, but you're going to go for that nice. regardless, right? But like, yeah, after, after Diffusal. Um, I don't know, is BKB an option? Yep. That's going to be first blood for Amar. And Duraja has to be careful. He's going to pop the rage, though. This this lane this bottom lane got basically twice as strong when Tiger hit level three. It is such a huge turning point for Clockwork's ability to play offensively. Like heroes that can usually somewhat trade with you just get absolutely destroyed all of a sudden because you more than double the damage of battery assault goes from 20 to 45 mm. from that level one to two. One of the biggest spell upgrades in the entire game, in my opinion. All right, good setup. Mid with the frostbite, a lot of damage to BZM, but he gets off the swatch. Oh, the oh, miss. miss from Boom. Oh, he's still got low him. ground, but he still finds the Ooh. kill in the end. Very close. That was very close to being extremely unfortunate for Boom. If if Taiga had enough mana for Cogs, he might have actually survived there. They find the Jakira. They get trampled down, and Yuragi gets off the time dilation. Uh, he's not going to be able to likely find a kill unless he gets a timely bash here on Any the bash? Boom. Any bash? No. no. This reminds me of when I play Faceless Void. Um, okay, give, I think me the, so, give me the deets. I think sometimes it's tempting to not skill time lock because it just doesn't work when you're playing it's the tremendous. hero. I understand why other players skill it though, because it's really good on them, so. <laughs> yeah, so it seems. Yeah. 
Uh, but BZM in the mid lane, 36 and 5 versus the 28 and 6, despite that death, was ahead of the CS. Uh, but we can see on the net worth, essentially even, all things considered, as he is now level 6, so the Rolling Thunder available. Uh, I mean, from the Storm Spirit's perspective, uh, Pairing an onslaught. Uh, yeah. Total miss there. Yeah. He does take down a lot of trees, though. That's true. Or is that one of the predictions for this game? No, it is not. So. Those are my favorite, yeah. I missed the, the community challenge to kill trees. Oh, Darasio needs to be careful here. Has the phase boots, which is very, very useful against the clockwork. Yeah, Tofu gets up the last war, but BZM with the rolling thunder. Oh, nice. nice juking from Tofu. Fancy so for gone on, though. I don't know if he's going to hit him a second time. No. Tofu you definitely has his dancing shoes on as he's able to only get hit once. As I believe Celery. this is what some people refer to as NA driver. <laughs> That's okay, what that sure. means. Celery. He's going to get soloed down. Amar actually gets credit for that kill. And now the Viper strike onto Darachi oh. is attempting to TP out. Oh, he dies in the fountain. Oh, dear. Very unfortunate sequence of events for Game and Gladiators in this bot lane. That feels awful, so he's going to have to make the walk of shame. And, I mean, do you have to go to the jungle? Because obviously Viper Strike, now that that's online, very low cooldown. It's not only that. Amar's going to be level 7, and you just cracked level 5. This bottom lane is over. Um, the problem is, life in the jungle is pretty slow, and you can at least still somewhat sustain yourself down here. And I think if you leave Maiden down here, she's just going to get dove non-stop, right? Yeah. So you probably kind of have to just go there and pick up the pieces and get what you can. But yeah, Mar with a complete dump string in this lane now, 1,400 net worth ahead of Duracho, eight minutes in. Effectively 300 more GPM if you think about it that way. That is... Uh, Invisibility. That's scary if you're gaming gladiators. This bottom lane, definitely they could not afford it to go this poorly from the get-go. I can see that uh, it started as a smoke and now an invis rune topped for Boom, who's now in the OG triangle, but Taiga. Yeah, getting the Viper here would be a really, really good play to try to bring back uh, Duracho. I think this Radiant's is the right idea with this invis rune. And it looks like Amar has no out. idea. There's the initiation. He has to stand his ground with the, the nether toxin and the right clicks. It's gonna actually trade him he's away, just going to rot away inside. So it's a one for one. And now Celery with the rotation of BZM will be oh, taken dear. out. So it looked like it was going to be a clean pickoff for Game and Gladiators not to be, and it might be even more as Boom has to expend a lot of mana, but Taiga, not Jeez, quite okay. level 6 no, yet. Maybe not, actually. He's, yeah, he's catching he's up. Shield crash, and he's going to get locked down into Oblivion, so another kill for OG. And that that is another big part of why Amari is so strong on this hero, is that even when the enemy team is going for his Viper to try to solve the lane after it's been lost, if his teammates are fast at rotating, Viper is a pretty hard kill. You can yeah. see Amar going for the traditional item build of Tr oh. oh, Chronosphere, and Amar is on the other side as well. That's a honor. And uses the Viper Strike just to ensure another kill on a core hero for Gaiman. What do you think about Amar's item build? I don't think I've ever seen this. Before. What do we got here today? Dragon Lance? Wraith Bend, Null Talisman. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> and two didn't branches, that. no stick. Okay. He's getting the mana region from the null, and then he's not buying stick. Uh, this is one of those do not try it at home moments. Uh, don't do not do this at home. I'm sure people will. You, uh, or, or do it at home. Yeah, maybe it's uh, maybe it's easy to pull off and, and look good on. Yeah, that is odd, but uh, Amar always has his reasons for I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he has bought this multiple times before, and I just haven't noticed, but it just stood out to me. This is an item combination you very rarely see, Wraith plus Null. Uh-oh. Good steal there from oh. Boom, though. He yep. got some of it. Indeed. Take ice ice pack. Pack. Oh, no. oh, no, 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 and now Celery looks to be next, potentially. Oh, Not even needing the rolling my thunder. God. And Gaiman just, they're getting punished every single angle of the map right now. That is a kill I would have never expected there. The fact that OG finds that with that combination of Jakiro and Pango was yeah. really, really good. And it was on the edge, too. I think he died from the last tick of Dual Breath. It was the very last second, so also we have close call, Yoragi. Yoragi, the global. global silence, the infest out, and they do claim themselves the Faceless Void. And it's hard not to look at a scoreline because it's a 3k lead for OG, but Taiga, he's going to be the next to fall, it looks like. 
Okay. So Gaiman able to get some important kills here to try to get back in this, this game. Well, they have also taken half the mid tower, so not too bad. Great rotation there, good first global. Uh, usually what Faceless Void does so well against Primal, which is also what happened in lane, right, is that you go on him and he just time walks away. But when you do have that global silence and you time it well, you start off the onslaught where Void is like, oh, oh, they're going on me, and then you global him and he can't solve it. Uh, obviously, Void will be itemizing against this eventually, oh, but not yet. And they also fix the I blocked him. He's dead on CF. He's dead on CF. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Alright, some, some laughing, some <laughs> gibberish a little bit here and there, but uh, worked out. I like Amar's advanced call of kill, kill, kill. Kill, kill, uh, kill. Good kill, kill, kill. strategy there. I, I do believe that is a winning strategy most of the time. Yeah, Tofu, he's dead. Um, kill, kill, kill. Uh, that's definitely a throwback to Eternal Envy days, right? Just repeat the same word. And he would eventually... still be saying kill now. <laughs> It's just like an endless loop. <laughs> <laughs> Recursive loop if you're a programmer. Why so. is no one ever, has anyone ever made an Eternal Envy remix? It's I'm, like I'm sure it they have that as like a the it would be a pretty I was going to say a pretty good beat but maybe not, but it would be a beat. I have actually seen one for sure. You have? Yeah, you can just okay. google it later. Yeah. Uh, but OG with I will definitely do that. Uh, Ace and company in the driver's seat right now. Uh, I mean, what does Gaiman need to do? The, the infest bomb was great, but obviously the global science was needed for that kill. Yeah, very long cooldown. They have global again in 10. I think you make another move like that. Okay. Um, so just do everything off the global cooldown. Not everything, but you need to use global. So whenever you have it, you should make a move. And when you don't have it, you maybe need to be a little bit more creative with the plays that you make. But when global is up, there's just no excuse for not finding a big pick. And it's going to happen right now. Swashbuckles to the creeps, which actually gives him a little bit of extra space. But there, he's gonna get silenced and eventually brought down. It cost boom every yes, it did, but he dodges the hook oh. shot. He's gonna be spotted, but I don't think they can close the gap in time. The ice path just barely not in time. And that is why Tiger's nickname is What Can You Do? Sometimes you just miss. And Duraccio focusing on the tier one tower will have to rage away as the rest of OG have come in. They brought this back for sure. That I mean, that was a very a fortunate minutes. swash, to be honest. Like yes. that play got so much harder than it had any business doing because the perfect timing of the swash buckle as Storm was jumping, and he had no way of knowing that. So, just pretty fortunate there. But also, again, Boom at least getting away from that is really great news for him. He's closing in on the Witchblade. Um, maybe he can solo Void with that plus Global. I think because Void has. Treads Midas, right? It's like, Yuragi is very far away from any defensive item that's going to solve the global. He's probably going to go Manta after the Maelstrom, I would imagine, or BKB, one or the other. Uh, but until that point, I think Storm has his number. And they could even kill him with an Infest Bomb, I think, without global. As long as they have that Witchblade, should be enough. Taiga is going to find Celery. Indeed, inside the Cogs. Ace is here to watch for the time being, but Duraccio pops the Rage, and now the focus is on Taiga. Gets off the hook shot, and look at that range from Amar. They end up getting the support kill in the end as BZM gets off. Oh, doesn't Give want to go the for the Thunder Clive as the Electric Vortex comes in. But you have to be careful to that Storm Spear. The Infest into Ace with the Trample. Not enough to finish off Taiga in the end as the Uproar procs. The cogs being used as a wall to be able to maneuver with this rolling thunder. That's gonna be the death of Ace and not a Chronosphere on his teammates, but the more Four important Chrono. is on the life stealer, and Duraccio will fall as a result. Not the prettiest of plays, but OG still get it done. I, mean, I don't really know if OG could have done much more there. What I'm wondering is if there was a way for Ace to set that up better on the primal, if they could have been quicker about it and gone on top of the pango and then get the uh, get the pulverize off, but. As we talked about pre-game, it is a hard primal game. You really need to hedge your bets about how you go. We're going to see the replay here. So this is obviously one of the best matchups for Clockwork against the support. Crystal Maiden, super slow. Can't really break your cogs very easily once she's in there. You kill her off. Now the, the Viper Strike going to go into Rasha, forcing the Infest here. And this is where... So when this Storm Jump comes in, if Ace uses his spell combo onto the Pango, I think they actually could potentially kill him there. I hear the Ice Onslaught, oh, okay. and that, that is a lot of damage. Taiga is dead. That'll do. Closing in on BKB now, Ace. We'll give him some more freedom, but it's not a guaranteed connection. You still, when you're pulverizing, you get countered by the Chrono, and you can get countered by Hookshot. So it's not... 
it's not one of those primal games where it's just like, all right, BKB unlocked. I'm going to start crushing fools left and right. It's not that way forward. Is that anymore. a voice line? I'm crushing fools. Is it? I don't think he speaks any actual words, just roars. Yeah, maybe one of them means that, though. That's true, we don't have a translator on hand quite yet. Uh, I do I believe like he speaks Slacks the same language as Slacks. Good. Man, we yeah. are on the same page. We absolutely. are on the same page. We finish each other's horses. As uh, Yuragi. No, we don't. The... <laughs> but... Yeah, just move on. That was a good joke, Ace. Yeah. Inside the cogs, which gets broken right away by Taiga. He is dead again, yep. so. They're able to find him pretty consistently, which, like you said, is a pretty important hero to take out before any of these engagements, because it does disrupt a lot of what Ace wants to do. Oh, that's a long Big jump. Zip and BZM. It's going to be found, but the swashbuckle out. Ice Path does connect onto Boom, but I'm not sure who wants to fight here. Both sides kind of happy to walk away, it looks like. Yeah, I think OG are a little bit timid. They don't have their clockwork, and Global Sounds is up, so that is a pretty difficult fight to take. And they also have the read that there's obviously Gaming Gladiator's vision there, because Pango got jumped in fog. Um, so I, I really like the call to not force that as Dire. I think the risk was... The risk reward was just not good enough for you. So they're going to chill. Uh, wait for Chrono as well. Worth keeping in mind, they didn't have that for that either. So probably even less eager to get anything done. But now that it is online and he has Maelstrom, perhaps OG are considering a move. Radiant are scared. Hearing that the infest bomb yep. ready to come, but the action's going to start onto Seller, who's just dead right off the bat. The global silence comes, though. Rolling Thunder already activated. As Dorachi able to claim himself the first kill, they're gonna find another on top as Amar falls. The buyback was used on the Celery. As you can see, the BKB already activated from Ace. And Taiga, and at the root, keeps him in place, and Celery's buyback ends up being worth it. So double kill for Boom as Gaiman taking a big fight for themselves, although BZM able to claim Tofu. Yeah, pretty good from Gaiman. They're really getting value out of this Infest Bomb right now on that Storm. Getting that Viper kill, ne just attack. negating Amar in that fight. He will have BKB probably in the next big fight, though, so then I think this play will not be successful next time around, unless Lifesteal gets a Desolator, so they have enough in the tank to just bring him down right away when they jump in. Um, but yeah, good good stuff for Gaiman Gladiators. I think in a pretty good position here uh, to pro proceed in the game, and obviously the BKB on... Primal Beast, huge reveal there. Uh, Ace yep. was able to create a ton of space in the fight, never got chronoed because Yuragi wasn't really there in the beginning, and Clockwork was on the other side of the fight, so got completely free movement. Players here. Yep, and for the rest of the item progressions, we can see that Duraccio is essentially He's halfway to his Desolator, which is going to be a huge power spike. What do you think of Ace working on? We've been seeing a decent amount of this, the Aghanim Scepter. Uh, from Primal Beast. I mean, the first thing I think of is breaking, but it feels like it's been picked up consistently even without that in mind. Yeah. Just a lot of damage. I have to say, I, I don't have the best read on the, like, when and why this exactly is good in a specific game, uh, but I will say one of the major upsides to buying it is that it gives you the mana for refresher, right? So okay. when you do take this path, instead of, like, certain other heroes in order to get refresh by Scotty, you're definitely not doing that. So it's kind of between the Axe and Shiva, and I think... In this game, maybe he feels like the armor from Shiva is actually not going to do that much because the enemy team has so much magic damage that maybe he's better off getting some more utility this way and then transitioning to Repressure. I think that's probably the line of reasoning. Uh, but I, I'm not certain when I would say the Scepter is better than Shiva because I think Shiva is really good on this hero in general too, so... But anyway... It, are those the three mangoes he started the game with? That would be hilarious. <laughs> It might be. I mean, maybe it's just kept. I mean, they get regions, right? Tower yeah, of course, just a little bit. I'm sure it's really helped out a lot as uh, Smoke. Ooh. Does break here. Your rocket doesn't see don't know see what him, direction. Though. It is daytime. Oh, yeah, is wrong. on the wrong side. Tofu. You have the zip coming in from Boom. Electric Vortex is there. And he's going to easily be taken out. So a big pickoff for GG. Close to a time walk, but not quite. But that was Global Expended and Half of Storm's Mana Pool. So maybe OG will look for something here. Yeah, they're going to start out onto Ace. Already at half HP. Pops that BKB. Viper Strike as well, attempting to TP out. Not enough. Will be fine. But Celery, not so much. Again, the sacrifice. I think Gaiman is A OK with that. That was, I want to say about a tenth of a second away from a, from a um, Primal Beast kill because Taiga just barely couldn't get on the other side of him to cog him for the knockback stun. 
So he did just get the BKB off on Primal there. With a level two hookshot, that's a kill 100%. Um, maybe if Taiga hits the angle a little bit better, he kind of got blocked by the creep on the left, so he couldn't find the angle there. And those things matter a lot. Like, that would have been a huge kill. It's the richest hero on the side of gaming gladiators that OG just narrowly miss. They do get the, the CM, as you mentioned, though, and that was a dieback from Celery, so he's on the sidelines for a very long time. That aura is going to be very missed right now. Yeah, level one very aura. So. <laughs> so. Ace cares about that. Uh, he has his mangoes. That's Wait, where are his mangoes? Oh. Did he eat them all? Uh, I guess. He's so really hungry all of a sudden. Do you ever, like, shotgun mangoes? Just, like, three back to back? No. I'm surprised that's in the diet of a primal beast, if I'm being honest. Mm. Tier one tower is done. 3k lead now for OG. Uh, when it comes to the old Roche, Cinderin, yeah. uh, who would you say has the advantage? Uh, probably... Neither of them are like actually, super I mean, Roche killers. What about like the team fight in the Roche as well? Yeah, when Duracho gets a death, so it definitely gets easier for the Radiant to do it overall, but I, I don't know. I feel like Radiant all the OG, if you put me on the spot, like you have Battery Assault, you have the Disarm from Pango. It all adds up. Poison attack. Lots of damage over time. The fight itself, I think it's it's completely down to global silence. Um, Gaming Gladiator's lineup can absolutely fight in any era of the map if they have vision and they get the initiation. If they don't, or global is on cooldown, I think things get a lot trickier. So, Taiga opting to go shard. I think pretty rare. I would say that Clockwork buys this first item. That's true. Uh, but really valuing that vision that you get out of that jetpack. Uh, I generally consider Force Staff to just be a better item than this because essentially a lot of the times that you use Jetpack to escape, you could do it with Force Staff too. But what Force Staff also offers is it gives you more mana and you can use it on allies. Uh, but obviously the thing that it doesn't give is the a flying movement. It's the flying you, movement. You don't get a Jetpack. And it doesn't give cool. style points, right? And style yeah. points are pretty important on the TI main stage. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, generally, the less you care, the better. So, yeah. Amar is the kind of player you want. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's pretty accurate, actually. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of questions when they were at their first land this year. How would they react? Because they're very good online. It's literally the same thing, right? But then they had an Not interview effective. with the coach, and he was like, I guess we'll win. And everybody was so inspired, they won the whole event. So Can't blame them. Uh, this Rocket player will show that the Roche is being taken right now from Gaiman. You can see OG not that close right now. They're going to smoke up and try to contest, but this Roche is going down. It seems like the purpose of this from Gaming Gladiators is to bait a fight. I think they know that they're not going to get it in time. Yeah, they uh, back out for now. So that one well. already uses the hook shot comes in, will connect, but there's the global silence into the pulverize. So it looks like Taigo will be the first to fall. Gets off the cogs. It's, oh no, uh, he's stuck inside the cliff essentially. Oh, again! again. After the shield crack, finally finds his way to the high ground, and Selen will be the first kill on the side of OG, but the buyback now onto the Jakira, but there we see Uragi with the Chronosphere all on the lifesteal, and he is dead. 50 seconds of no Duraccio, and that might mean OG gets Roche, but we'll see. It is only a couple kills, but again, the, the lifesteal is the big one. The fact that OG come out of that <laughs> after the with worst that Rolling result, Thunder. like yeah. double he, he went from stuck to stuck with Rolling Thunder. Like It happens. They're going to see the replay here of it. So good global, in my opinion. I think they have to kind of combo break here and get the clockwork out of the picture immediately so they get a numbers advantage. But that panga roll, and then <laughs> uh, this hero has some of the funniest moments in the game, but they were still OK. How, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Roche, very low. It is low, but the hook shot onto Ace, and it looks like Yurag is going to get the Aegis, no problem. Ace now cannot get out of the cogs easily. And as a result, OG pick him up. And now oh, there's a haste. On. Boom. Pretty low on mana, but BZM pretty low on HP. So they reset, being happy taking that first Roshan for themselves. Now they're sporting that 4K lead. And the Global Silences, I mean, they've been consistently getting kills, but in like a Roche fight, like that was essentially, they, they popped it, they killed the support, and the support just bought back pretty much. Yeah. Like, they don't they don't stay dead very long in these. And this, if you're just getting a support out of the Global Silence, maybe not. Uh, this has been one of the biggest downsides of the hero for a long time, right? Is that when you play it as support, Global is such a huge part of what your hero offers that if you don't get a big payoff, 
Yeah, it, it's not the greatest. So I think, I mean, given the circumstances there, if he doesn't global, I think that hook shot just leads to a really problematic fight for Gaming Gladiators. So he probably feels forced to use it, but it, it's like, I think that was a good global, but it was just because he had to. He doesn't want to use it like that. So you, you want to, in this game, you want a global to kill Faceless. You want a global to kill Pango when you get that jump off, but you kind of have to kill them in the storm stun because Pango has the Yules into Blink and Void has the BKB. We should mention Tofu does have four staff uh, and Dyer's Celery's working on one for himself now as well. Yep. So just having these options for uh, the cogs. Yeah, you need that for sure. It's like your best. Uh, celery. Best celery, but here comes the initiation from Boom. Look at the first damage global signs there, but Yuragi pops the BKB and the Chronosphere. Trying to focus down Celery to start things out. They'll get him relatively easily. Now, Duraccio gets destroyed. Misha gets credit for that, and Boom able to zip away. And Taiga, no hook shot here. So Boom is fine, but the initiation from Gaiman looked good initially. Not able to find themselves a kill, though. And that was still either way on an Aegis holding Yuragi. Yeah. They didn't have Ace as a part of the play either, right? So they were lacking that bit of damage and teamfight control that Primal Beast offers. But sometimes it is like this that Primal Beast either, I'm not sure if that exact moment if he was pushing out bottom, because if you're all five heroes missing all the time, your plays get really telegraphed. Sometimes you have to show a core to give the enemy team uh, the chance of getting out of position or feeling safe when they're not. So it's understandable that Ace is maybe showing here bottom, but it, it's it's just a tricky situation when their lanes are this pushed in bottom and mid. Like you, you gotta you gotta take care of that when you're making the play as well. It's hard. And OG's counterplay just again showing proving to be too strong. Yeah, Miragi. He might use the Aegis here. Nope, time Not blocks, even. he's fine. And now a lot of mana missing from Boom. BZM. Are they actually going to Rolling yeah. Thunder, yeah. Celery. He's going to be spotted and easily brought down from OG as Ace gets. Four staff action. Now the zip in from Boom. This is going to be in a fast bomb. They're going to try to focus down Yuragi. They get him. That's life number one. But the storm is already dead. You can see the uproar. Aghanim Scepter from Ace doing massive damage as he secures himself a double kill. But now all onto Duraccio. Gets bashed up. Gets brought down. And it looks like Ace is next on the list. Pops the uproar one more time. Oh, he actually gets a nice polar. Okay. Nice triple kill for him. And no! Oh my God! Oh, no. oh, oh kill. My Actually brought down to Yuragi's hand. How the hell did he get an <laughs> ultra out of that? Man, I love that Aghanim I, I, that I, have say, I have to say, it's kind of winning me over right now, that Axe. I mean, a, in Aghanim's Labyrinth, that's the hardest part. Since that was a pretty strong things. fight. He did more damage than his entire team combined in that Absolutely. fight. Absolutely. Um, I mean, okay. that is an issue, right? Because you're losing the life steal and the storm pretty early in these fights. Let's see the replay here. Yeah, so Maiden dead straight off the bat. And that's a, a very nice use there from Misha of the Psychic Headband to push the Primal Beast away a little bit and buy some time. This will come in handy. This connection is super good though. Really isolating, killing Viper. I think he had one second cooldown on BKB there, by the way, Amar. So could have been a very, very different outcome if that had happened three seconds later. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. The uproar is going to feel real good. Oh, yeah. Into the pulverize. A hook shot into the live. Taiga. Well, BZM is here to try to help. It's disarmed there. And Gaiman just disengaging a bit as, <laughs> okay. Celery with the freezing field just wants to hit the R button this game. Understandable. Pretty hard game to get that off, honestly. Yeah, if he doesn't use it, I think Taiga was actually trying to bait. He still had stick and mech ready. Um, wasn't expecting the freezing field damage to pop off there, I think. Wanted the Storm to have to zip to finish the kill, and then maybe they could have made a counterplay. Not worried about it. What do you think of open wounds being picked up? Uh, like an actual person. Oh, yeah, a lot of times, with, it, yeah. lot of times life, so you get it off of Roche. I mean, against high HP targets, it's extremely good because it's percentage based for each proc, but uh, I mean, they don't. I mean, the strength here they have is clockwork, so a little bit odd. I guess it helps him stay on top of targets and some extra life steal. He becomes a little bit less fully, like, less dependent on Storm Spirit constantly. Mm -hmm. I, th I think, for the most part in these team fights, Duraccio has been kited really hard. Um, we've talked about all the counters to Primal Beast. They're counters to Lifestealer for similar reason, right? Viper Strike, Cogs, Hookshot. If you have this shard, maybe you can stay on top of a target or at least reconnect on them later in the fight. 
it's a, it's a relatively small price to pay for the opportunity Precious that it, it could offer you, right? Dyer's um, bottom tower is under attack. But yeah, obviously you'd rather get it from Roche, but that has not been happening for game in this game. Yeah. Miragi, no. Oh. Hook shot. I got find Celery again. He still does not Mara's in the area to help finish the job. So support kill is boom. He's gonna be seen here from Misha, but pretty hard to catch that Storm Spear without uh, either. I mean, they have Ice Bath, Chrono, and Hookshot. That is quite possibly the worst gauntlet challenge I've ever seen. You get Hookshot by Clockwork, isolated, and you don't have four stuff, and then you challenge him to a duel <laughs> as Crystal Maiden. I think you cannot use the gauntlet any worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> that <was> very good <laughs> from Celery. He knew that he was doomed. I mean, I mean Celery, he's a memer, so. You're 31 minutes in and you don't have four step on Maiden. He's having such a hard game. He had the dieback earlier we talked about. He's just been dying every fight. 11 deaths here. And it's... Oh, we got okay. the zip in onto Amar Duraccio. Oh, that's a BKB from Amar. He's going to try to walk away, and the rest of his team is here. The bash comes out out of the swashbuckle, but now the global silence in retreat for Gaiman, but the TP. Yule Scepter, boom, out of mana, and brought down again. OG punishing everything that Gaiman is attempting here in this game number two. Amar's just so tanky. This is his standard Viper build. He tanks up Dragonlance Scotty. 3k health, 25 armor. Lifestealer doesn't have the damage. Yeah, Duraccio, he's gonna be jetpacked on, and the bash comes out from BZM, gets off the open wounds, but it's not gonna matter. He is caught out. And two big, big kills for OG, because they can try to extend this lead now. Of course, Roche, we won't know uh, when he'll spawn for the next 30 seconds, but they, they do have very good presence on the map, does OG. Yeah. And Silencer's early efficiency is really starting to fall off now, right? Because this is what usually happens with the hero. Enemies ultimately get the gold to counteract your global. If you're not very farmed and have a refresher yourself, you can't really offer the same dangerous utility in the fights you could before. Or you survive till you get tier 4 items, and then half of them will dispel global yeah, silence. that doesn't help either. <laughs> But Silencer has come back into the meta after a long That's true. drought, That's true. primarily because his one of his biggest weaknesses in the past was his laning stage just wasn't as good as it used to be. And he got buffs in that direction that a lot of the times makes it worth it, even if... Uh, because Global is an incredible ability for a decent portion of the game, and the, the, the downside isn't as significant as it used to be with the laning stage. Uh, but now we're reaching that traditional state of Silencer that happens pretty often uh, in this kind of game where you oh, you feel like you're one button more or less and you need to use it perfectly. Oh, man, BZM um, has the hard spell to use. Right now. He's got Ags, he's got Shard. Uh, he has the 2.5 second shield crash talent at 15. He is doing a lot. Of, he even has the Brigand's Blade tier two item that he's gonna still hold on to because that good yeah, very on good. this hero. He's going to do a lot of damage in these fights. As long as he's able to get off the Rolling Thunder, he Radiant's is going to be very fearsome. Under attack. We have smoke from both sides. As Boom is being uh, he's infested on right now. Radiance top tower is. I mean, one we should say one downside to infest bombing because that used to be the, the way to play this storm nakes combo from back in the day. You know, you're not getting the HP benefit really. Like, it's not a save. We've seen that mm -hmm. from the group stage, how powerful that can be. That's true. Yeah. If you're always engaging with Infest, it never does anything else than that, right? Yeah. Um, I, I will say, though, the way these fights have played out most of the time, I don't know how much of a save it would have really been. Probably I think not. most of the time that OG isolate them, they're kind of just in trouble regardless of a, an extra 500 or 1,000 health, however much it is, depending on level. All right. Okay. They are going for the old Roche. It's already at half HP. And I don't think OG's gonna get here in time. So this is gonna be a nice sneak. That is really, Gaiman. really important actually for gaming. Duraccio regretting like this. buying his shard now. <laughs> Although Boom will take it. That's a very good one as well. They put the Aegis on Life Stealer, not on the Storm. Generally considered one of the single best Aegis carriers in the game because of that full mana pool you get back, but that is interesting. I, I don't know what the logic is here because a lot of the time when you put Aegis on Lifestealer in this like Lifestealer Storm combination, it's because Lifestealer is going to go and hit high ground, right? That does not seem possible <laughs> in this game right now. Yes. Uh, I think you have to find team fights, and that's where I, I like it more on Storm probably, so you can play more YOLO, just jump in, expend his mana pool, get a second life, and try again. 
Because um, as it stands, OG's heroes are just getting so damn tanky. Viper with the 3k health as we've covered. You've got Greaves on clock. Tango's got a oh, he gets initiated on. Okay. And he gets enough. blown up from 100 wow. to 0 instantly. Like I said, they don't have the damage, Shannon. It's uh, <laughs> well, case if, in point right there. If they're able to use... Yeah, the, the shard does a lot of damage from Boom, of course. But I mean, like I said, the... The open wounds, it does percentage-based damage. Doesn't yep. matter how tank you are. Of course, that they do true. have ways to dispel it, but if you're going to be stun locked, then it eats through you very quickly. I think Yuragi was really surprised Amazing. to die there. His 3k health and a, and a time sliver just died in the vortex. Crazy. Obviously, Boom with the level 20 talent has that longer vortex, so helps out. Is eyeing up a BKB now, has the axe. Yeah, don't count gaming gladiators out even though it looks hard because that Roche could have potentially changed everything I think a little bit of a blunder there from OG It's easy to say from our perspective that that is one they need to defend but just didn't have the read at the right time that it was happening and Now gaming gladiators Foot on the pedal just straight down to bottom tier two I don't think OG are interested whatsoever in trying to defend this so one. I will say even though I mean, we're seeing them actually hit buildings with this Aegis, right? So yep. that, like you said, having that on Life Seal, it does help. Uh, and that's something that they did not take advantage of last time, is when they got the Roche, they were not able to do anything with it, as the Macro Pyre used to slow down Ace, but he's going to be fine. Uh, he was eyeing up the Shivas, but he changed it now to a refresher. Uh, he gets hook shot, and the Cogs back in, but the zip, and oh, the instant bash onto Boom! He has to use his Yules just to keep himself alive. We'll have to zip away now, as even the Infest is used to actually disengage. Looks like Tofu is going to be the sacrifice, but that was an instant bash from the Swatch after the zip in from the Storm Spirit. It's a little bit unfortunate for Gaiman, but they don't lose too much. I believe the math on getting a bash when you... Oh, hang on. They're going to go back That's in, and you can see they're going to blow up Amar right off the bat. And the buyback from the Silencer just to get the global silence off. And now the Pulverize coming through as well. Double kill for Duraccio as Yuragi wants to try to fight, at least trying to get the Crystal Maiden. He'll do so. He'll time walk back out. Not a whole lot of mana to speak of now onto the Life Stealer, but he's got that Ghoul Frenzy Cinderin, which is all he really needs. He gets Hookshot though, so Taiga gives himself enough space to walk away. This Diffusal Blade is being very annoying on the side of OG against Gaiman, but. Gaming coming out on top of another fight here. There is still Chrono. That was never expended in that fight. Global sounds on cooldown here from Toku. Can't protect against Void going for that if he wants to. But yeah, pretty good again from Gaming Gladiator. Sure, you use your silencer buyback, but I don't think that was too terrible. Uh, Aegis, however, only one minute left. So I think they would love to find one more fight as long as this is online. Global up in 30 would align very nicely with the play. And you are seeing them all go back to base to get resources. And I would imagine a smoke could be on the menu next. If they have any left, they don't, I think. None of them are on their support, so maybe that's just not a possible play. Oh, Ace Yuragi. is showing himself. Yeah, he was looking for something. He's going to get gone on again, though, and he's going to be bursted oh. again. He does have buyback if he wants to expend it, but it looks like OG will likely just attempt to get back to base. So Gaiman... Again, oh boy. with I the mean, Aegis has made such a big difference in these fights that they feel very confident to go in. That kind of felt like a bait from Yuragi, but again, it's just he doesn't survive. They don't force staff him. They don't get the hook shot in time. I think that time the swashbuckle did also bash. So I don't even think he was unlucky on the pango. It's the wrong read on how tanky he is, really. And I don't really blame him that much. I'm also a little bit surprised with how easily they kill him. But considering they already did it bottom by now, he should know. <laughs> what the game state is, right? So yeah. this time around, I think less less excusable than the first one. Game and I mean, this game looked like it was getting really grim for them. I think, yeah, the the win probability was 84% for the Dire. And yeah, now we're pretty much flipped. back to a 50-50. So anything, anyone's game again. Indeed. That's a good shot. shot. Duraccio no more with the Aegis. He's going to get pushed oh. back, but he gets the Infect off in a creep healing up a little bit trying to get his hp back via right clicking but it's not going to happen but the reinforcements have arrived as boom able to get one but taiga buys back into the game ace pops the bkb now focusing on amar with that trample doing quite a bit of damage now we'll have to just uh, tp out but he gets no back. Back. whoa oh, okay it was a cooldown cool i think from 
shield crash, from the bash shield. was on cooldown? Yeah, I think he got a bash from shield crashing on the left. Ah, okay. So I think his basher was on cooldown for that one. Because, like, that was a shield crash plus a full swashbuckle. If you don't bash, the, I don't know, it's like 25% maybe to not get a bash when you use both of those together. I think we're going to see it perhaps in the replay here, so keep an eye on that in the end off to the left. Nice global here, by the way, was almost enough to save the... Uh, the the life stealer didn't mention the greaves by the way on clock to be able to yeah. dispel that very yeah. nice exactly but the, the global just took made him take a little bit of time to make that play and that was enough to not get the full cogs combo off but we're gonna see here i think this is where he i think he already oh, crashed off to the left right it was on cooldown down there so yeah no, he's happy yeah. Yeah. that was a close one Durasho not too happy with, with that death though it seems like both carries are a little bit too far forward like maybe each team needs a, a Lotus Orb or something like that to maybe protect a little bit from these jumps. <laughs> oh, he's, oh, he's gonna get hook shot on, and the item is still down there, but he pops the uproar. No more bashes as a result, at least temporarily. Duraccio's come to play as well. There's a zip in from Boom to focus again on Duraccio, and he's dead again! Third time they've done this! Taiga, he's in his jetpack and he's TPing home. They find a lone Jakiro though. So Misha drops to the deck and Gaiman seem to be, have turned this game around completely. They, they've been winning every little engagement since that Aegis was taken. Is it time, Shannon? Is this when you buy A on this convoy? <laughs> oh man, I mean, do you, you think don't. status resist would help here or is that not enough? I mean, it, I mean, it obviously feels bad to have to go for it, but. He even swapped out his status resist, right? He gave away the Titan Sliver to get a ninja gear, so. I think in this, it's actually kind of ironic. I think in this moment, he might have actually survived with the Titan Sliver if he had had it. I think that would have, out of the three times they killed him this way, this one, it might have worked. And that was the time he didn't have it. I, I don't know, I, I'm joking about the disc, of course, but they need to find some sort of way of protecting their void. OG have really dropped the ball a little bit here in the last few minutes. Yeah, Boom has Sheepstick now. That's huge, so yeah, now, I don't know, I, I, I do think you have to play tighter around the Void. And keep in mind, OG have one four staff and it's on the Viper. He has the pipe. Oh, boom, actually initiates onto BZM, but there's the Eon disc proccing for him. Duraccio trying to re-engage, but he's gonna get the infest off onto Boom. He's just getting bashed into oblivion, into the rolling thunder. They take out the Storm Spirit. Beautiful coordination from OG as Ace. Kind of left all alone right now, but he's a big juicy boy, so might not want to touch him here, Cinderin. BZM. Gets off the bash. Ace has to use Refresher, and he gets bashed mid-TP. Oh, but gets off the Onslaught and into the Yules. I would assume this is going to be a kill eventually, but he gets off the Pulverize now. He's going to get this kill on the BZM, pops the Shard, and Ace just getting kited with the time dilation on top, and eventually the big bad beast is dead. That is terrifying, though. <laughs> the fact that he almost turns that into a kill is kind of ridiculous. Again, the damage recap for the... How many fights does Ace have to do more damage than his teammates come by? I'm sold on the Ags, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's really I, good. I, I, I'm very impressed, too, I have to say. It's doing more than I was expecting. But the result of this fight means that third Roche with Aghanim's Scepter on OG. Yuragi's going to take the Ags, so now he will bash via the Time Lock. Yep. Of course, that won't help him survive. It will be a very reliable way for him of stopping the Primal Beast from doing his thing, though. And now they're attempting to go high ground. No storm for 15 seconds. You can see Ace does have buyback, despite being dead for 50 right now. Hook shot, and Tofu, he is donezo. No buyback no, on him. Yeah, 90 seconds of no oh. silencer, that is big. Now they're focusing down onto Celery. He does have buyback himself, but Amar and company really want to go deep. The Chronosphere completely wins Viper. other than Amar, and that is going to likely be the death of him. We'll see if he gets the tips or not, but either way, technically speaking, Gaiman does defend. And now the zip from Boom, finding the Jakiro. Double kill for him now. <laughs> so they defend, and they they got, no, the Aegis is still there, and it's still four minutes on the Aegis. <laughs> and full buybacks here for OG as well, but that did require two buybacks on Gaiman. So it was costly, Syndrome. And a helpful Chrono. 
Yeah, hey, that's unfortunate. I mean, you can totally understand why he's going for that chrono. If it lands, we're going to have the replay here. So I really like this engage first off from Taiga. There's a one minute cooldown in Silencer's buyback. I think OG have track of this here, so they know it's a high impact kill. They find the Maiden here. And if this chrono connects on the storm there, they kill them both. We're talking 0.3 seconds, so it's like easy to be like, lol, what are you doing, Yoragi? Oh, we got a double buyback from OG as they've lost their mid set of racks. And that means Gaiman resetting. You can see Amar not too happy with being chronoed by his teammate. Understandable. The ace is infested on. You can see Gaiman. If they can get the nice little cheeky kill on the BZM, that'll be a dieback. Okay. Zip. Okay, that's the Agon Scepter Electric Vortex onto the both supports, and they're both dead no just like X. that. And now, pulverized, but the Eon Dis procs is BZM trying to find some distance. Dorachi and company trying to focus down Yoragi again. There's the onslaught, there's the first death. Do they have more stuns? We'll see. Spawns back in. Frostbite is dispelled instantly. Celery getting it. Okay. Boom goes in with another big stun. The Yule's keeping BZM alive, but this might be the death of him. Gets off the shark and the swashbuckle. He's alive. But there's oh, the onslaught no. again. Are you serious? BZM still lives. That would have been an enormous kill just based on not having buyback anymore. Oh my god. I can't OG believe dodging a bullet. That. My yeah. goodness. Such a great initiation from Gaming Gladiators, all set up by that offensive observer ward that they had in the base, seeing both supports. And they get a great jump with the attack. AoE Vortex into follow up Primal Beast Onslaught. But still, in the end, I don't know if, if the backtrack gods were helping out Radiance the Void there as well to delay this maybe attack. a little bit further. But look at that beautiful oh, engage that there. Easy double kill there. And now keep in mind, Ace, we haven't, I don't know if you mentioned this. He has the pulverized talent. Did you mention that? The 25 no. talent? So Paul, the Primal Beast has two amazing choices to make at 25. You either double the duration of pulverize oh. Ooh, or you make it pierce PKB. Yeah. Gonna use his shard, but they're gonna try to focus down. Amar, the open wounds is ripping him a new one, but there's the chronosphere. Oh, he gets popped outside. Boom will live. Unbelievable. And we'll see if they're able to turn this around as you're wrong. Oh my god, he time walks everything off. But BZM is taking the brunt of the damage, uses the shield crash, trying to get back to his base, but the onslaught finally finishes off oh, the pangolier. The Rachio barely alive as the uproar doing a good amount of damage, but Ace will finally fall. So it, technically a one-for-one one exchange. Tofu, able to TP out. Oh, <laughs> Everything is so close. Everything is literally like <laughs> one millimeter getting bounced out of the chrono, one millisecond on the TP, everything just tooth and nail. I thought OG might have lost the game there, honestly. Yeah. Like when he gets bumped out of that chrono, I think Boy was on 5% health and got time walk off. Like, so close yes. to both sides. You're going to see everything here. So <laughs> that Rolling Thunder is now going to be on top of Boom. Oh, There's the chrono. Oh, my So now he gets God. bounced out. Unreal. Gets force-staffed. And now Yuragi is going to drop super low, backtracking some of the damage. <laughs> yeah, just Tribal's some. in and out. Oh, my meanwhile, Amar, he's God. dead. 115 seconds of no Viper. Big Wait, kill was for Gaiman. Was he just out solo pushing mid? Yes. His teammates were too far away to help him. He does not have buyback. That might be it. And Pango's dead as... I mean, I guess the reason he feels somewhat comfortable doing that is Primal Beast is dead. You're not safe if your teammates aren't there. It's They're playing it safe. They're not going to go for Throne despite being in a 4v5 advantage or 4v3 advantage. So we'll take the top set of racks and then can waddle their way back down to bottom to get Megas. But still so much time without these heroes. But here's the initiation. Global silence, but the instant BKB. But the, now the back applied to Yoragi. Now trying to focus down Dorachi. He's going to have to time walk out, and instead they're going to lose Taiga. Does have buyback, though. Yeah. That's two sets. Now out of the bottom lane they go. Still 30 seconds until their Primal Beast is back. I actually think OG had to try for that. If they don't do it, they lose the lane for free, and the play just happens bottom instead. Now they have a buyback play, potentially, with a 10-second cooldown on Chrono. This is defendable because Ace is dead and Pango is spawning. Gaiman actually needs to be a little bit cautious here, but they don't know necessarily what could be coming their way right now. Nice rage reaction on the ice path, though. Bash. Gets bashed inside, though. Chrono is available. Doggy. Not going to try it. Yeah, reverse time walk back out. And okay. you can see Amar obviously dead for 30 seconds. He's the one holding cheese as well, so that's an important item potentially uh, that's still sidelined. But now it's a 5v4 until Amar is back. But they were not able to secure Megas. 
And OG still have everything at their disposal once Amara is back online. Man, what? <laughs> this is this not is yeah, so at all game. how I imagined this game playing no. out 30 minutes ago. Like, no way would I have imagined that we were getting this. What a treat, though. It feels like every team fight has some sort of detail that means everything. Yeah, like, and it's always something very small, yeah. technically speaking, right? Like one key backtrack, or one hero getting pushed a little, or one perfect four staff. All right, oh, initiation onto Yoragi. He's gonna get pulverized. Is this enough? It is, but he does have buyback available. The bash not enough to keep Boom in place. Big rolling thunder from BZM as the Viper strike now to Duraccio. He's gonna get chronoed as well, and he's gonna be brought down. He also has buyback though, but that's the bigger kill on Ace, who does not. And he used Refresher, too, before he died, which I guess actually doesn't matter because he doesn't have buyback. So thank you, Shane. Great analysis, as always, from Cinderin. As now OG. I don't know. Who's in the driver's seat? I don't even do know. They, I feel like, do they have, they have they kept track of this buyback timing on Primal? Like, it's a minute away. Sometimes true, you don't have true. the exact timing, and it's like on a hunch, right? If you know for a fact it's not up, this is where you could push for barracks. And again, they do kill Yoragi, but this time in his own base oh, with the buyback. pulverizes are absurd. Imagine if Ace gets level 30. Yeah. So he has the those. other talent, too, because <laughs> that is just absolutely dirty. 100% pulverized duration that pierces magic immunity makes it effectively a six second single target stun. Yeah. That does AoE damage. Not too bad. And it lines up perfectly with your BKB duration, right? You pop BKB blink in, six seconder into a six second pulverize, couldn't be better. Wind Waker. Oh, oh, you're not gonna capitalize on this at all. Yeah. They can't. But they will have their eyes on potentially Roche, which we know it's going to be a while. The potential spawn time is already up, so it could spawn at any second, and neither team is scouting it right now. Yeah. Uh, obviously, OG will buy a Rockus there as soon as Taiga is up. You don't know yet. And I do think the crucial thing there is, sure, OG defend their base, and it is a pretty good team fight win, but I think Void's buyback is worth more than 5k net worth. Like, I think if Gaming Gladiator's lead was 10k before that fight and it dropped to 5, I still think I would consider that a, a, a win for the time being because they have a clear way to victory now. Yes. Killing Void ends the game. I mean, look at the buyback so, situation right now. Simon. Yep. All that five is... of OG have none. Yep. All exactly. five for Gaiman have theirs. You just need any sort of good core kill, especially faceless, and I feel like you've got this one locked down. You also have a nine second BKB on Boom. He finally buys it and oh, has wow. buyback. A so very late game yeah, BKB. He got it minute 53. Okay, uh, Tiger. Shot. Is that going to be the kill on the support? But there's a global silence. Boom comes in with a beautiful electric vertex on the two. The support is already dead, and Amar extremely low on top. But he pops the cheese. Now he's taking the right clicks from Duraccio. But there's the Chronosphere with the Macro Pyre on top. Is it enough to take out Duraccio? It's going to be close. He gets silent, so cannot rage. Cannot use open wounds. But he dies and buys back. Three dead for OG. No buybacks available. And that might do it. Gaiman will have a free path to this next Roche. Yeah, they're gonna and get a free Misha path too. potentially for the game. Misha doesn't have buyback either. Indeed. Four dead on the sidelines. Misha is done. If they've kept track of the buybacks, they don't do this. So, Gaming Gladiators don't actually know the game state here. This is 100% over if they just push. It's There's always very... Absolutely no way Void could defend this. Maybe they're just going for stats. They need Roche kills, Cinderin, to get their quest completed. Yep. Maybe that's a bonus that Gaming get. Gladiators, the org, will give them the more Roche kills. <laughs> We promised you would bring you the ace. Oh, we get to see Life Stealer Aghanim oh, oh. Scepter. Duragi, he's gonna get punished. The sheep stick is there. Please use Infest on top of him. For the love of God, no, we won't. But it's a full team wipe and GG is called as GG. Gaming Gladiators extended to game number three. What a game. I was not expecting them to come back, but no. that, was it the second Roche? That, or was it the, the one they snuck? The one they snuck. Yeah, they basically one of the game. What an insane comeback this was, honestly. Like, that's got to be such a huge morale boost, too. You know that you were losing that. We are gonna win this game in 30 minutes. Oh my! He calls it. We Babe Ruth in it out there, sir. I'd ask you another question, but that's hype as hell. We wish you the best of luck, Mr. Faith, and we will throw it over to our casters. Let's get ready for game number three. Thank you very much, Sir Action Slash and Immortal Faith with the very bold prediction 
I was not expecting that. Usually those interviews are one-word answers that sometimes don't even answer the question that was asked. That's I don't know if that's a common thing these days, but it seems to be the case at this TI at the very least. But very bold, under 30 minutes, Cinderin. I mean, Do you that, believe? I mean, that's about half my interactions with Slacks, though. He asks me a question, and I don't really answer it because the question was bad. But that was actually a pretty True. good question. So I'm proud of him. I think he's improved a lot. Um, 30 minutes? Yeah. Uh, I like the confidence, Prepare obviously. Um, I think if they'd interviewed Chu, he would have been like, yeah, we'll probably find a way to win, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> but Immortal Faith is a little bit more animated, a little more, you know, he makes more maybe yeah. radical predictions. Uh, I would be very impressed if Gaming Gladiators win this game in 30 minutes. But the thing I really like about hearing it is that I think that is what they should be setting out to do with this strategy. Because I... I kind of agree with him when he says that they're, they're going to outpace OG. I think there's portions of this game that that should be happening. And then it's about whether OG can weather the storm uh, and buy themselves enough time. Also worth noting, Amar playing... Th in this tournament, he's been playing Sand King a couple of times. This is not a traditional Amar hero in the sense that it's not a lane dominator. It's not an, a hero that scales particularly well with farm compared to a lot of other picks he has. Um, so maybe this time around, if things do slow down a little bit, it's not as much in the bag for OG later either. Because I think Carry Naga in this game is not automatically going to win this late against a mid Kunkka and a safe lane Shadow Fiend. That's There's plenty true. of AoE damage, That's have true. solutions. So, going to be really interesting to see. And obviously, or not obviously, but honestly, more important than the strategies, how do OG bounce back from that last game? Like, we can't overlook the fact that that was a game they feel like they should have won. Do they have that mental reset backstage? They already have a level one battle here. Duraccio gets off a couple nice raises, but won't result in a kill. As in terms of the actual bounty distribution, I believe it's going to be split here. But the fourth still to, to come. Yep. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see the Invoker again come out from OG, which was obviously extremely successful in that game number one. But uh, And they have the Naga again, but this time it is in the carry room. So, looking at their lineup, like what is their goal other than to win the game? Don't don't, don't make that joke. Like what kind of a pace are they trying to set? Like they just want to stem the bleeding, which is the laning stage for them, or? I mean, there's plenty of combination plays for OG, right? You have Sand King Marana, as was pointed out. You have the Sun Strike. If they can make a couple of successful early skirmishes like they did in game number one, I definitely think their mid game can be really strong. Uh, but I. I would say their lineup is more dependent on being able to do that. Like, let's say nothing happens for 10 or 15 minutes. I think Gaming Gladiators have this really, really strong uh, potential push with Tombstone, with Beastmaster, uh, with the Shadow Fiend, and Konka hitting this, like, really strong mid-game peak. And it's their bread and butter as a team, right? This is what they were so good at earlier in the year, so you would imagine that they have the confidence to pull it off, playing this faster pace. Yep, and once Ace gets a couple of items, Helm of the Overlord, I would assume. It's kind of a... It feels like a bit of a death ball. Where they try to get these towers relatively early, but we'll see if the pace ends up being for them. Uh, mid lane is boom on the Kunkka this time around versus, as we talked about, BZM's Invoker. What do you think of the Kunkka pick this game? Because that's... But a lot of these heroes have been kind of recycled throughout the series to some degree, other than Sand King, I guess, Marana, and this, this Kunkka. Yeah, it's a hero that generally does very well against Invoker, but I think Quasic Sort has a, a much stronger laning phase against it than Quas Wex does, so I would imagine this lane probably pretty much breaks even. Uh, that was one of the parts where they picked it. I think the other one was to cover their bases in case Naga goes carry, right? We had the same situation as in game number one where OG have the ultimate last pick, so you want to make sure you don't expose yourself to having Shadow Fiend have to deal with Naga on his own in case it goes late, right? So it felt like a little bit of a... a a very nice solution to finding a hero. They're probably like, okay, what hero can we choose that lanes well against Invoker and can help us against the potential carry Naga? And I think they, they made a good choice. Also, the whole pacing thing, right? I, I just think this lineup, is, it's nice to look at. It's a clear story to how the heroes want to combine and get something done. So. As the axes come out from Ace in the bottom lane, harassment continues. Again, this is game number three, elimination match here. Winner will play the winner of the next series to come. Uh, how many OG fans do we have in the house today? Okay, not, not bad. What about Game and Gladiators? Oh, wow. 
Okay, actually more gaming gladiators based on my old ears, Cinderin. Uh, but good to see. Nice distribution either way. Or maybe they're just louder. Yeah, yeah very, very true. The vocal minority, as some would say. Yeah. But I'm sure they made some fans in that last game. That was a nice absolutely. comeback. Absolutely. I mean, you talked about the momentum potentially coming out from something like that. I mean, OG, it feels like they don't get affected by it as much as other teams that are, I mean, they're pretty young, right? But I think that storyline kind of, of them being affected by stuff like this kind of ended after the last major. Celery, making some heavy damage. There's the leap from Taiga. Another one, right click to come. And he'll end up getting first blood as a result of it. As Taiga just continuing to roam on this Marana. Yeah, you just can't underestimate the Sunstrike factor. It's, it's always going to be there. Oh, Burrow Strike Sandstorm into the arrow. Even bigger kill coming out from OG in the top lane. That was very greedy. Did you not expect the Mar to be there? Radiance bottom tower was under hey, attack. Honestly, the worst part about look at how many denies a Mar can get here or CS that Shadow Fiend loses. Yeah, no. He lost a full wave. I mean, sure, Celery gets some experience here, but that is that is just not a good start. And you know, Shadow Fiend on Dying Lane, I would pick any day against Sand King Marana to have a good start, but just Undying being a dominant force in this lane with decays, he's, he feels very safe. But Sunstrike is that X factor. You just can't deny that that is the kind of thing that can swing this kind of lane, and OG are making use of it. Yeah. I mean, that's how Arrow is balanced, right? It's hard to hit, but if you have the setup stun. Yep. It gets pretty scary. And Burrow's not too bad for that ice path as well. If you want an arrow that you don't have to hit, you can play Gyro. Okay, sure. Uh, it's a lot weaker than a perfect arrow, though. That's right. It's not as exciting, some would say. Oh, again, top. Yeah, Garacho. Oh, they didn't. Coming out. Miscommunication not connect. there. Or I think Taiga didn't see the line for the arrow, so he didn't go for it. He went for the leap star storm because he felt like he was going to hit a creep. Garacho counting his lucky stars there. If there's an arrow connection, he's dead again. Glimpse. Yeah, okay, ace. ace save. Trying to get rid of these pesky illusions via the axes. Yeah. And look at their inventories bottom as well. Ace with the triple mango, Basilius, and Tofu with the triple mango. So just really I mean, non-stop spamming. He does. Even last game. They're just spamming, spamming, spamming. Yuragi running low on that region. There's a couple of tangos left for Misha to pull. But he has to be careful himself that he doesn't get too exposed here. He would almost die to this Thunder Strike. He has Stick yep. and Fairy. We'll have to use both, I think. Now the Fairy will be safe with the Tango running. Toku successfully dealing tons of damage as this support disruptor. Get Asus CS line here. 13 denies. Oh, got the ensnare. Sun Strike to come, and that's enough. BZM. That's going to help him in the mid lane. Yeah, it's gonna give Yuragi a bit of breathing room. He's getting crushed. He's 19 and 0 against Beastmasters 34 and 13. So 13 denies on that beast. Definitely has a big laning or level advantage until that Sunstrike kill comes in. And mid lane before that point, I mean, basically even on the CS between BZM and Boom. And we'll see if BZM kind of changes the build at all, or if he's just gonna go the exact same thing. I mean, obviously the mine is not too big of a surprise. And then after that, we'll see. I think he'll do the same again, yeah. Uh, this does not feel like a Midas Sand King game, though. I will make that prediction ahead of time. Yeah, pretty good call. <laughs> that would be one of the worst heroes, maybe, to get that. Especially, he actually farms relatively fast once you get the Sandstorms up, but... Yeah. I mean, this yeah, is... don't you worry. Amar is going to max Sandstorm, okay? There's oh, a yeah. limit. There's a, he's not maxing Burrow Strike. So like, uh, no way. Yeah. In terms of CS, or net worth overall, Dyer's kind of top averaging top out top. right now, but like, like you said, Ace is kind of tipping the balance a bit in Gaming Gladiator's favor uh, between Gold the two offliners right now. Yeah. And With I a mean, very fast Helm of the Dawn, this bottom lane actually becomes a lot scarier for OG. I don't think they can really afford to send their Mirana down here to do cleanup duty. Like, if you swap Mirana and Jakiro, I think your top lane is very susceptible all of a sudden. Jakiro does not perform nearly as well as Mirana against Undying Shadow Fiend, so that lane swap wouldn't really be too good, I think. And Snare and bottom, there's the Sun Strike right? coming, but it's going to be shared, it looks like, between Tofu and Ace. But oh, still, these damage. axes, Glimpse now onto Yuragi, he's getting very low, has to pop the wand, the Ice Path 
used to dissuade GG from continuing on, but Taiga has TP'd in. Leap into the Star Storm. Not good enough to find a kill as Misha's taking the Thunder Strike damage from Tofu. So despite the TP coming out from OG, Gaming Gladiators are the one that get the kill. I'm very curious what Tofu skills are. Oh, Amar in the Sandstorm. They have the vision, has to burrow to the high ground. Like he's fine. What does Tofu skill? He's still holding his point. There's the glimpse. Oh, the rock right. is dead. Ace gets credit for that one. And this bottom lane, absolute disaster for OG. This is just such a high pressure lane. Just axe spam, Thunderstrike spam, Glimpse now dealing damage. I think perhaps the mindset that people have when they see Disruptor picks where they're like, this is a position five, is a little bit outdated. Because now that Glimpse deals damage, I think he offers a lot more in offensive yeah. dual lanes. Which is really... It's not ins it's not insignificant if you're ahead in the lane and you force enemies away and you get that extra 150 200 damage that you didn't use to. And also keep in mind this hero with farm. I, I would argue disruptor scales pretty well. He has an insane axe. He has really good talents. Like don't count this out as a potential four pick later in the tournament. Mars well. going to be seen here. There's the dust. He is xed up as well. Torrent to follow and the raise tries to time it but can't. As Boom gets credit for that one. Nice arrow from Taiga taking out a creep, but still, this feels like Gaming Gladiator's pace at the very least. They're finding the more valuable kills overall. And we'll see in terms of the mid lane, obviously we've seen the Kunkka kind of participate already. BZM with the Midas now in tow. Once he gets the boost of travels, I assume that's his go time to get a little, a little bit more involved with the team. Wow, that was a lot of neutrals instantly. Yeah. That, that sound was quite aggressive. <laughs> okay, Miragi is going to find Ace here. Could ensnare Sun Strike this. Yep, they're going to attempt to... Up. Oh, nice block on the arrow. With the arrow not going to connect, but they still have so much damage to work with, and Ace drops to BZM. It's the second time this game. Yeah, this is going to come at the cost of Amar being in Struggle City up top. Like, Shadowfiend has a firm control of this lane. He's completely alone on that Sand King, and even Boom was still fishing for an extra kill, but Amar, with a good defensive ward, uh, had that vision and information. Good get caught. Arrow. Arrow coming Ooh. in, but the creep wave arrived. But the Ice Path connects, Boom. Getting cold snapped into the Meteor, but we see the Static Storm plays to zone them out, and it's gonna be enough. All right, so I think get Boom away. Spell accuracy there was... Um, not the highest percentage. The static storm hit. TP for me, Rana. Just run, block with your ball. I sent for coming. It's just broke, but too. I heard Celery say something towards the end. I think Tofu said good shit, bro. Good shit, didn't he? I thought that was Celery. No. Oh. Very positive team, though, I will say. I, I like uh, listening on their comms. Game pretty even though. Uh, let, let's talk about the eventual Roche to come, Cinder. You know, I love these conversations. Yep. There's there's two aspects to it. One is killing Roche and how fast, and the other is team fighting in that area. Yeah, the fastest kill will go to Game and Gladiators, I think, unless Naga is very farmed. Uh, even with Alacrity and Vulcan Factored, and you have Shadow Fiend, that Beast Master, just two of the really good heroes at killing the Roche. Uh, together with obviously Flash Golem, Tombstone, everything. Um, but the team fight around it is is more tricky to call, right? Both teams have so much to work with. There's the Naga song into destroying Tombstone. That's an option for OG. Uh, you have tons of combinations if enemy heroes stack up between Sand King and Invoker. Um, but then you also have the, something we haven't really talked about in general. Don't talk about that much with Kunkka. I think Ghost Ship is really important in this game. I think damage mitigation, whenever you're playing against a lineup that has this much like one-shot burst, the Ghost Ship can really make a difference. They're gonna find Yuragi, no song skill. Yep, Ghost he Ship is, is a done. In. Gets hit, Duraccio even priming his ult, not even needing it though because the Static Storm is placed with the raises in addition. More than enough damage to take out Yuragi. See if they go for this tier one tower, but OG, they've oh, they the, the second away! The Blink Dagger comes out as well from Amar as Duraccio, he's getting very low, will drop inside the Macro Pyre. It's gonna be a trade for the Jakiro though. As Taiga. 
able to leap out, but still inside that kinetic field as they end up taking out BZM on the sideline here. And four dead overall in favor of Gaiman. They lose the Shadow Fiend, but still. Such a good play from Tofu. That is so crucial that he finds that there. Sand King with the blink reveal, blink epicenter stun instantly glimpsed to the top lane. You're going to see it here. So gets this initiation. He sees him there. He gets the glimpse while the ult is channeling. So only the burst strike comes out. And sure, you get the Shadow Fiend for it, but that's everything thrown away. Gets sent to the top lane. It doesn't have that second burrow strike that could have really cemented this fight potentially for OG. They get punished big time and lose the mid tower. That's huge. Dorach is like, damn it, but good job, guys. <laughs> We've seen a few of those uh, in this series for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Shadow Fiend is very susceptible to getting blown apart by this spell combo that OG has, and they do showcase it there. <laughs> but the cast around him, that's... Radiant it feels good Austin. when you're playing Shadow Fiend and you can die first and win a fight. Because a lot of the time this hero is sitting on so much of your team's net worth and he's somewhat frail and... You know, you, you get punished really hard. At that time, he wasn't even needed. He just sponged up damage in his team clean house. Oh, we have the gank here coming out from OG, and they're going to find themselves, boom, gets off his ghost ship, but to no avail here. <laughs> BZM with a tip, missing the arrow on the Sand King's stun. Doesn't need it. But they do see this juicy stack, and be a little bit of a slow one, but we have the glimpse top lane, static link, and the roar expended. Looks like BZM is going to tick out here one way or the other. Amar able to TP top. They might find the trade on Tofu, but you can see Celery is in his flesh golem form. If that soul rip available, and Duraccio has come to play as well. You can see the tombstone dealing a huge amount of slow here. Oh, nice from Amar able to there. Find another kill in favor of Gaiman. Well done. Dodges, tier one tower. dodges the glimpse with Burrow Strike. One of the only mobility spells in the game that can do that. If not the only, actually. It has to be a short list. If you time it, the way it works is that... Storm Spirit. Yeah, Ball Lightning. No. I don't think you can with Ball Lightning either. So Burrow Strike is really special because like you you actually technically do get glimpsed back, but then it takes your end point of the Sand King stun. So you want to cast it so that you begin the animation as you're getting glimpsed back, but you finish the animation after you have returned to the glimpse position. That makes sense. So. It's a pretty narrow window. Nicely done from Mark. And they're going for the kill onto Boom again. The arrow sunstrike combo as well. Tofu, he has to walk away knowing that Boom will likely fall again in the same area. They almost didn't have enough in the tank there, but just enough. Another 100 health on Kunga could have made a huge difference there. Glimpse. Really, they're they, still guarding the enemy ancients, and finally they will attempt it. Lamar, they have the vision here, obviously, as Game and Gladiators. We'll see if they try to contest. I mean, but Game and only they don't really see that much here. Yep, the axes come out. Got a couple of those, but a lot of these are going the way of Amar. Oh, he steals the dragon. Tiger's going to run it for okay, it. No, the no, roar no. coming into effect. Oh. And Taiga inside that fireball. I can tell you with 100% confidence, I would have done the exact same thing there and die. That was a black dragon with 100 health that Ace took over. He leaps to try to arrow and kill it. It gets soul ripped by Undying, who's randomly there in the fog. And no way out. To a Roshan. Tombstone is down as Gaiman. They're feeling it right now. This is where their lineup really comes online. And you gotta say, Immortal Faith, you have 14 minutes left. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta start That's quite pushing the timer. Easy would be a very big kill. Thunderstrike giving them some vision. Glimpse back into the static storm, attempting to TP out, but boom is here. Boat and all. They get the Aegis, they get a high value kill. Gaming Gladiators looking extremely good now in this game number three. Yeah. They also defend their mid tower still. Remember, this tower did get to half health quite a while ago, I believe, and just haven't been able to finish it off. And this is when things can get really scary for our lineup like the Radiant. Naga needs time. She is not ready yet. She has a Manta only. The enemy team has Helm of the Overlord, Tombstone, level two only for now, but well, oh, oh, Taiga, leap, leap. Uh, that's not a good glimpse, but it's good enough. It's dealing damage now. It doesn't matter anymore. That's true. <laughs> He just wants to get an assist. Wait, did you get an assist back in the day when it didn't do damage? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think it's still counting. Well, Amar has been in the enemy ancient area for seemingly the last 10 minutes, it feels like. Yeah. 
Very Radiant's comfortable here. Tower is under attack. You, you, you just kind of have to give up these towers. I think, realistically speaking, OG might just lose their entire tier 2 line here. Because Shadowfiend has 4 minutes on the Aegis. The team fight is extremely terrifying to take into Tombstone, Hawk Vision, Helm of the Overlord, Dragon. It's just too much, right? I, I don't I don't think they can really oh, solve it. The question they're is gonna force the fortification. What do you do about this one? Yeah. Immortal Faith. He, Immortal Faith. He gave them maybe too much of a buffer. Maybe he should have said 20 minutes. That's right. There's the X. Tier 3 already at half HP. Torrent connects, but they're just doing the damage to the tower right now. Two thirds of it down. Absolutely. And did he he didn't use tombstone yet. They still have that for the next wave. They could honestly consider this. The, the stakes are I'm really sure high though. I'm assuming that a bunch of TPs maybe came in the in the fog, but yeah, but you play it safe here. There's honestly the possibility that you can choose not to care there. There's a pretty big difference between OG's lineup in this game and the previous uh, in game one when they had the monkey oh, king. Yeah, the Moonlight Shadow coming out. Boat is coming though. Looks like Tiger's gonna be the recipient of that again, and two supports likely to fall right off the bat for OG. 5v3 advantage. Tofu, never mind. He's the support to fall for game, and now Yuragi's gonna be found out. Now, this will be a huge kill song. Ends up resetting for OG. This should open up Gaming Gladiator's way to just push down the mid lane potentially, but Amar is thinking the same thing. Takes out the next wave. Yep. Invisibility. Managed to cut that. This is pretty crucial for him, buying that time. I think if he doesn't do that, that tower's gone. So, good job there. Effectively delaying the game so BZM can close in on a BKB and Yuraga surviving there also very important. But you're seeing the pace that Gaming and Gladiators can put with this lineup. It's very, very quick. And they are they actually going now? All right. That's good enough for them. No song. Yep, that's a big spell down for sure. Two minutes on the Aegis still. Macropire's there. Arrow connects. Can they get the first life from Duraccio? He's going to get Soul Rip back to a respectable amount of HP. And it looks like they might just be setting their sights on the tier 2 mid instead here. Yep. And in the meantime, BZM solos the bot tier 2 tower as Invoker, opening up outpost possibilities. Oh, that arrow. Could not go anywhere. Doesn't matter, though. And remember, coming into this series, I believe the stat was in the last year or so, seven was it 17 and 4 yes. in OG's favor? Yeah. Is that series or games? Games. That is absurd. And now we're on... Game number three, brink of elimination for each team. This will be the right time for Gaming Gladiators to That's finally right. get a win again. I mean, we talked about it before game one. That's a lot of learning opportunities. <laughs> yeah, Every that loss is, true. is a learning opportunity for sure. And with only a minute left on the Aegis, not sure if they can go for the last tier two. We'll see how Game and play this. Might want to burn it top. Like, I think you really to get that tier three. Yeah, I think you take the risk here. Okay, maybe not oh, mid. Oh, the initiation oh, on the ace. He's dead right off the bat. Does have the buyback. I'm not sure if he wants to expend it though. X into the torrent. There's the big Requiem to follow, but doesn't really connect on much. Taiga does go down to the right click, but that's still a support for your off lane. Epicenter from Amar, Sunstrike to follow. Trying to take out the support on the Disruptor. They're gonna get the Undying first though. Static Storm not on a whole lot as Duraccio pops the BKB, trying to stand his ground. He gets a double kill for himself now, but the BKB has run out. The song connects along with the Ice Pass. That's life number one. Torrent to try to slow this down, but Duraccio looks to be completely surrounded and he's gonna be brought down by OG. Tofu somehow lives despite basically being the one initiated on his boom. He's gonna get tornadoed. Now blocked up by BZM. Doesn't look like they have much more catch to follow though. That is honestly the dream for OG the way that played out. They kill Beastmaster first with no at no cost. Like that is Ace just being a bit out of position. They were biting over more than they could chew, right? Shadow King was already looking to go and hit top, and in the meantime, Beastmaster was pushing the mid wave with his body instead of just the summons. And Amar just pounced on that opportunity immediately, and they get themselves a huge defend because not only do they kill that Beastmaster and win the fight, they end up saving their top tier three by going aggressive in mid. I think if, if Game and Gladiators can connect top with all their heroes, they drop their tombstone, and the one minute Aegis is, is live on the Shadow Fiend, the bare minimum is that they get the tier three. And they could have maybe got a lane of racks with any sort of good team fight. Now the Aegis ends up going completely to waste. All that is from one moment. Well, that's, they did get a bunch of towers. Yeah. Damage to the tier three. It was more in the 
in that moment. In the context of what was happening there. But you're technically correct, so I can appreciate that. Good job. Yeah. Shout out to Cinderin. Yeah. For appreciating Shout it. out to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty even game. And we are a little bit less than eight minutes away from the timer that Immortal Faith put on the team. Yeah, clock's but... seriously ticking right now, but I think... <laughs> I mean, how, what's the real clock, do you think? Like, how, when do they... Oh, is yeah. there an actual timer? Like, okay, this is too late now. Uh, they, they do have some scaling options. I don't think so, as long as Konka goes the right items. I think Gaming can even win this game at 60. Um, but I do think it gets trickier and trickier, to be honest. So this second Aegis, I would say, if that goes the way of OG, I have them all the way. It goes the way of Gaming Gladiators, they have another good moment of opportunity. We're gonna find Celery here. Yeah, Burrow, and all the setup in the world for the, the old Sunstrike. I don't think it get much, gets much hotter than that in the Dota universe. You got Macrofired and Sunstruck at the same time. That's well, a lot of Fahrenheit that suns, A little man. bit later is Duraccio, Requiem coming. Not able to dodge it with the mirror image, but it's like the Naga will get away anyway. Well, at half HP is the they Moonlight Shadow, Tofu. keeping cover. Nice Burrow Strike on the two from Amar. Epicenter to follow, Sunstrike as well, and Ace is dead again. And only Duraccio and Boom left. The Ensnare keeps the Shadow Fiend in place, and it's looking like the death of him as well. The Meatball Surprise brings him to his knees. Double kill for BZM, and OG now back in the driver's seat. Really, really good spell casting, and Killer Instinct there from Amar. Finds both setups, just perfectly done. Recognizes what he can do, and again, Ace on the Beastmaster gets nothing off. He has BKB. He's actually really farmed on the Beast. He's highest net worth in his team, as usual, almost. With Helm of the Overlord, BKB doesn't matter if you get Burrow struck and full-on burst comboed. So, this right here, when this fails, you have to hard disengage. But they're sticking around. You see, they're kind of like going back and forth. They're uncertain what to do, and that Burrow Strike right there just seals the deal. Ace gets blown up. Full-on spell comboed, and top they even have that ensnare from the side to boot. Just beautiful Dota from OG, just finding the angles and the right picks when they're giving the opportunity. And all of a sudden, now this looks pretty damn grim for Gaming Gladiators. This move, I, I dare say, this move has to work. If this works and they get Roche, they can kind of stabilize. If it fails again, wow. Naga is starting to reach critical mass soon. Yeah, we can see the Roche timer is pretty damn late this time around, so... Oh, yeah, I agree. The second Roche is a requirement for game, and it feels like. Both sides smoking, though. It's Boom showing himself Dyer's in the Sunday enemy triangle. And in the cover of these illusions, Amar and Tyga. company try to initiate Taiga. Oh, he only nice found the one man stun. Out. Ace again getting locked down. Sunstrike to follow again. Pox's BKB finally. There's the primal roar now on top of Amar. Still with the BKB, but. Gonna see Requiem from the sideline. Not quite enough to take out Amar here. But the axe, oh, he gets out of that as well. Amar, slippery man. They still have vision on him for they Clems. Do. Finally comes oh. back, double kill for Tofu. That's a gem. Heroes. That's true, gem drops. Unfortunately for Gaiman, Roche not up anytime soon. Dude, that, if I'm honest with you, the game could have almost I'm not going to say the game could have ended there, but Amar did not find the stun of his dreams there. He actually had a three-man lineup, but he only hit the first guy. I think didn't manage to click on the back hero in that stun and just ends up getting only one yeah, here. Right here. Wow. Look at that yeah. potential stun combo into Ice Path. Yeah. They literally just wipe them out if that lands on three heroes, but instead Ace gets to play for once in this team fight. Huge impact there with the roar, obviously ultimately leading to the same key kill, and they've already killed the Mirana, so... Middle tower has fallen. Could have been the stun of his dreams. It's still not terrible, right? Like, you still have decent control. You didn't lose Roche. Yeah. He's the M. He's, he needs to keep in mind the enemy team has the gem. Yeah. They seem more scared of him than vice versa. <laughs> yeah. The gem is on Tofu, though, and he's not frontlining, so they didn't see BZM run up there. Uh, pretty bold, honestly, to do that in that situation as Invoker. I mean, yeah, you have BKB, but... Zoraccio is going to get X back. Able to defend this easily, though. It's a nice benefit. Yeah, and they're going to keep the Roche control. 20 Roche. seconds to go now. Indeed. Roche number two, so very important. Would you give a shard to if you get it on game in here? Shadow Probably Beast Beastmaster. Do you think that's oh, better he, than Nessa? He has, he has it already. Yeah, I, I think, despite that, probably Shadow Fiend, right? Yeah, I guess so. I don't think Tidal Wave Dyer's is worth it. No, probably not. 
They're just sitting in the pit, but you can see the smoke down from OG. They are ready for this potential fight here. And Roche has begun. They're gonna pop the drums. They really want to get this quickly, but OG are here. Sunstrike's gonna give them some vision. There's the Burrow Strike epicenter as well. Into the ice path and macro pyre. Massive damage being applied. Finally, the BKBs come out. Duraccio with a massive requiem for himself. He's just going for the Roche, but he's gonna be old. BZM takes the ages. OG gets the Roche as well. And now they're gonna try to turn this around onto Duraccio, who has no BKB anymore. Massive fight for OG, and the ice pad clips Ace, who has to BKB TP. He'll be fine, but OG winning this fight and getting the Roshan. I didn't see if they got the shard, but I assume yes. Was it that like BZM took it? I think that was a tornado from BZM, by the way. It wasn't a Yule, right? They don't have a Yule. Oh yeah, they just maybe. literally just clutched it out. Perfect spell casting there, and Amar. Oh, Amar has a Yule. It might have been his. Never mind. But crazy. They. Now Sun, high ground. Sunstrike was so key there. They really needed that oh, Sunstrike man. vision. Look at that Celery. damage. Celery dying in his own base. This is going really fast all of a sudden. Yep, tier three is down, and now the focus onto the mid racks. Game and Gladiators are in a hurry. They have one minute, 15 seconds left to win the game. <laughs> Immortal Faith. <laughs> Immortal Faith! You got, you got to rally the troops here straight down mid for your prediction to come true. Down with an, are now Man. with a 9k lead for OG. That's it's crazy good for them. Like honestly, that pit fight, if they don't have Sunstrike, I don't think OG win that fight. I, I think they absolutely, the vision. they absolutely needed this vision. It gives Amar the certainty that he can epi burrow these two heroes yeah. before they BKB. I think, I mean, this is so hard to decide in the moment. I think, I, mean, no, I, I don't even know what you do. You, do. you have no idea when the pounce is coming. It's gaming gladiators, right? You just, you just don't know when to pop BKBs. Man. Good stuff from OG there. Get themselves a 10k lead and an Aegis on Invoker. And at this point, with how their lineup works and what they're set out to do, it looks like Gaming Gladiators need to do some pretty massive outplaying in the comp team fight to fight two lives Invoker with Blink Hex BKB. Yep, it's gonna be a tough one, no doubt about it. And we haven't even discussed uh, Yuragi too much this game, but he has a Scotty Manta Butterfly and working a heart next. He is gonna be tough to bring down for sure. And I think the problem here is Boom is going Hex, right? And it's a lot of the time on Kunkka, this is a good item in the slot. I wanna play here, guys. Thank you, Illusion. Aurus, Aurus, Aurus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he tanked it. We're super low, we're super low, guys. Yep. I have a last pot, uh, SF. I have a last pot, SF. Rush, rush, rush. Get it, get it. I, uh, tom, tom, tom. Uh, yeah. I wanna place here, guys. Thank you. Oh, very calm. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been screaming. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, but we're gonna see a smoke from both sides. They're gonna collide immediately. The Burrow strike onto two. Undying deleted. Ace and Boom able to get off their BKBs, though, in mass for the entirety of Gaming Gladiators. In fact, now they might have to back off as Ace able to get the correct Naga Siren with the roar. But this is all in a defensive measure. Duraccio. Game in on the run. Duraccio trying to Satanic back up to a healthy amount. It's a good amount of damage, but Ace is dead, and now the Ice Path connects. And this is looking very, very bad for Game in as they lose their Shadow Fiend as well. And the song just to cancel any potential TPs. Tofu spills. Three for one. OG. Yeah, this is starting to look more and more like a formality of just going down the lane and getting a lane of barracks now for OG. They have 50 seconds on the Shadow Fiend. Without that hero, Game Gladiators can't fight. And what I was getting at is that you're going Hex on Kunkka, which a lot of the time is good here, but the problem is you don't have the damage against oh, Nog anymore. Good tornado timing. Canceled. That's very nice timing. EMP is going to connect. Triple Meteor thanks to the Shard. BZM oh. not going to pursue any further. But Yuragi finds himself a Celery. Yeah, he was trying to delay things bottom by cutting out this wave. BZM has the edges, so he doesn't really care if he gets killed here, to be yeah. honest. He wants the mana back, so he's just going to go and hit the tower. Indeed. And they're pressuring the bottom tower as well with Yuragi and all his illusions. Tier 3 top falls. As boom, still trying to defend. Tornado comes out. The BZM still, like you said, that age is still in tow here. Now he's going to jump in. It's off the cold snap and the ice wall, just buying some time. And finally, the Aegis gets expended as Yuragi is going to be taking out the bottom racks in the meantime. But Static Storm, Ghost Ship is coming, and the Roar on top of it, and they do get BZM. 
Wait. A lot of damage being applied to all these buildings, but no racks quite yet. Song in retreat. And still the melee racks alive in the bottom lane with 200 HP. How the hell did Tofu know to static storm there? There was one second cooldown on the BKB on Invoker at the end of that kill. Oh, he just probably just did it. They just, right? they just felt it, you know? Yeah. They're like, in my mind, when Invoker plays like that, oh, he has BKB for the second life, you know? Right. But they actually took the chance that, on the off chance that he doesn't have it ready yet, we get the kill there, and they did. That was really surprising to me that they find that kill on BZM and effectively defend all three lanes. They've lost all the towers, though. <laughs> Literally everything is just ripe for the taking, but that was pretty crazy. And yeah, okay, I, I like this from Boom. He deviated from the Hex. I think he realizes they need more damage. Like, the Naga Illusions are too big of a problem. They have 4k health. He has to be able to deal with some more AoE cleave. He's going now for the Silver Edge, which is a good connection item. I, I honestly wouldn't mind seeing him going Rapier after that if we get to that point instead of Hex. I think you're in that territory now where you have to take huge risks mm -hmm. in order to pull it off. I mean, how good is uh, Rapier these days on him? I mean, with all the changes that have been made in the last few years. I think it's pretty solid uh, when you have the Silver Edge. BZM is going to pick up Hex very soon. Needs another few hundred gold. Yeah, he's getting close to Lincoln's. Did I say Hex? I meant Lincoln's. Yeah, that's fine. We're on the same page, Cinder. Yeah, we agree. He's buying item. You can speak gib <laughs> gibberish and I'll translate for everybody. Almost on KB on Duraccio. That was a joke I'm just going to ignore. Oh, the leap out. No connection quite yet, but the glimpse finally comes in. Able to get the vision at the last moment as Taiga gets dropped. But OG not afraid. They want to continue on. Amar able to get the one with the Burrow Strike. Requiem kind of the zoning. Oh, they pop the BKBs to try to get away from the song. Kind of an awkward engagement Who's overall. Running from who I don't right know, now? but the Ice Path connects onto two. Tornado to follow. So both supports controlled right now as Misha trying to outrun this Triceratops and zombies as he <laughs> gets destroyed by a hawk, it looked like. Triple Meteor now as BZM just playing with his food. Not able to land that ghost ship, so BZM finds the distance. Now that would be an interesting team fight to have the True Sight audio on. Because, like, go back, go back. Uh, I don't know. I'm out, guys. I'm still here. Okay, I'm coming in from the side. OG did not seem like they were on the same page with what they were trying to accomplish with that song. It kind of, I mean, it's one of those moments where you might have a really good idea as one player, and then one thing you're counting on from someone else, they're a little bit too far away or whatever, and you end up, like, walking back and forward. Considering how that was looking, I think getting out with two support deaths is probably pretty decent for them. Because um, that could have got really scary if they had chosen to commit a little bit too much, so... End up settling for that relatively minor loss, and I think it's time for both teams to start having a look at good old Stone Guy. Spawn timer obviously not known nope. to the teams, we know Bit it. Bit of a late one, again. But it is the area to play on the map now, for sure. I'm... I actually think the biggest concern for Gaming Gladiators right now is how do they deal with BZMs and Boker now as Lincoln. I actually think it's really, really tough for them to solve this hero with the heroes that they have available right now. He's creating insane amounts of space, he's forcing them to use BKBs, and they can't really go on him first unless they get some sort of really clean way to break the Lincolns. Like, you can X mark or glimpse into Roar, but it's just very, very hard. He's so fast, you need to have vision. Not easy at all. And he keeps pushing in this bottom lane. He's constantly forcing rotation. That time it was Kunkka with the X mark. He can't do that again. And BKB now up for Yuragi. And of course, he's had the heart for a little bit now. And at this point, he is running out of room in his inventory. I guess the treads can go, potentially. I don't know about the old Aghanim Scepter this game, but we'll see. Moonlight Shadow. <laughs> Sentries immediately placed. Boars have died thanks to the oh. Aghanim Scepter uh, via the arrow. Very tense here. This could be the final fight for a game, and if, if it goes poorly for them, they decide to send in their Thunderhide. Yeah, Triceratops gets the ward successfully. Getting Soul Rip now. The fight between Triceratops and Demon going the way of Demon with Alacrity. Yeah, but now they have a wolf. 
Yeah, the wolf is very powerful. It's from another dimension. As evolution has shown, the stronger pet. Okay. Oh, nice Almost. sidestep <laughs> by the wolf. Yeah. Gaining intelligence via evolution. They do have the good vision here actually placed, which could give them a moment of opportunity. They see nice. a lot of heroes right now. Now they don't. Yep, okay. Back. This is all about when Roche is up. And obviously the vision yeah. for Gaiman uh, with the Dyer's Hawk potentially here playing a big role. And let's see if it's the Ags. It's Refresher Shard. All right. Good on Invoker, though. It is very good. Just less exciting. Let's be real. Agnum Scepter's cool. I don't know. I feel like an Invoker Shard is pretty exciting. Very good, like I said. The wolf is still alive, in case you're wondering. Yep. The Hawks have been spawned. But surely there's going to be sentries in the, the area, yeah? The dual breath idea that this is here. Horde Spirit's really important there, actually, giving him some much-needed information. Uh, Amar, the Tombstone comes out, so that cancels the Blink Dagger, but here's the song just to kill Tombstone. See if they can turn this around on top. The Ice Path connects onto Celery. Doraccio gets off the Requiem as well, but it doesn't really connect on much. Ace gets the Blink up, and a nice double burrow from Amar. Inside this kinetic field are two members of OG. They find the first support, so one for one to start. Buybacks galore, though, as Doraccio trying to right-click his way out of this, but he is not doing anything, it feels like. The deck Requiem comes out. Ace and the rest of Gaiman on the run. Epicenter, oh, Amar, all right, blinks to the high ground on the other side of the ice wall, and it looks like this is going to be the death of Boom at the very least. OG trying to clean up even more as Ace on the high ground, being slow to a crawl and being brought down again. And OG in prime position to move on here in the lower bracket of TI-11. Yeah, if they were to just push now, they would get Megas. There's two cores without buyback on Gaiman, but they will get the Roche first. Keep it safe. They're not over-rotating for the Roche, though. They're doing it with two heroes and leaving a little bit of a cheese for fun here, letting yep. it ferment for later, then it heals more. That's right. That's how it works. Uh, tastes better, too, which is not unimportant. <laughs> uh, top, top racks, racks are gone. The creeps will take care of it. And onto the mid lane, OG goes. Tofu trying to stem the bleeding, but I feel like they might just have to give up the Megas and try to fight outside of that because they don't have these heroes up for quite a while. Plenty of time for OG to try to finish this right here, right now. The Burrow Strike onto the Disruptor. Does have buyback, though. Seller is going to be spotted in the trees. Tornado not going to connect. Along with the Sun Strike as well. Looks like he'll make it back into the fountain as the song being used to control them. Oh, that's ice path. Path. Oh, BKB from Duraccio, but if you have to use that next to your fountain, that's probably good news for OG. Glimpse back on a Taiga, but the Mega Creeps have come. The zoning is successful. Trying to focus oh, down on that beautiful strong. Burrow Strike from Amar. Ice Path to follow, but Duraccio with the Requiem from a good distance here, but they're really just working on the illusions. That's what's taking so long. And again, OG, four minutes on the Aegis. Now we have the Deafening Blast. The, the six Meteors come out, burning them in their own fountain. Epicenter to follow. Gaming Gladiators will fall as OG will move on. Ace, the last remaining member of Gaming, but he's going to die inside the fountain as GGs are called. So Gaming Gladiators, a great year overall, but eliminated here at TI-11. And OG will move on. Yeah. Whew. That uh, that was spicy. If you uh, if you think back 15, 20 minutes ago, that looked like OG could have easily been on the ropes with yes. one good top push. Game and Gladiator's strategy was not far from being successful in what it was trying to accomplish with that first Roche, but that one moment where they have Beastmaster. Call